They say someday. They say someday he'll come again. And daddy, I am coming. Uh, Joe, if you're listening, you stupid fuck. He looks like a one of those guys that from Long Island that wants to be a white rapper, but he's 30-something years old, lives in his parents' basement with the droopy cap and the whatever, but he thinks he's Howard Stern, and he's got a cool way of talking in the microphone, uh, and he's a shock jock or whatever, and somehow or another he accumulates followers on the on Twitter is fucking pathetic so please nobody listen to anything involving a guy named Joe Cronin because it's just so fucking sad it's getting to be ladies and gentlemen 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 start your engines now it's Sabu! This, 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 this is the most mature audience's only shit you've ever heard. Shit. Period. From Boston. From Boston. Broadcasting all over the world. The world. Send the soy boys home. Cause we ain't gonna sugarcoat shit. Drop down, let me give it to you. This, this is, this is the Joe Cronin Show. Now, now, here's Joe here's Cronin. Joe Cronin. Joe Cronin. All right. Tonight we got MJF cutting the kind of promo we all wanted to see. A sexy one. No, I don't know. He, I mean, he got an all right promo. It wasn't anything, it wasn't anything crazy. I thought he cut a good promo. Like, it was good. Good enough. He's in there with four guys. He really didn't have, didn't know what to say. You know, MJF is like me. I don't know what to say either to, to, to him facing the pillars or whatever. And he's, I loved it. I love what he said, though. I love that he was like, Oh, the bidding war of 2024 is coming, and that's why they're scared. And that's why they're putting me in with four, three other guys. You know, they're stacking the odds against me because they don't want this belt on me when I go the other place. I actually love – I think I like that. But that's honestly – what he said there is the bigger story. I'm more interested in that and what he said there than is he going to defeat – Darby Allen, is he going to defeat this guy, that guy, or the other? I'm not even interested really in that. That doesn't even that doesn't even compute for me at this point. I'm interested in the other stuff. That's what I'm interested in. So, we'll see. What's up, everybody? It's been a weird week. I mean, I've had, uh, I had to work double time at work, so I've been extra tired on the show. I have had not good shows these past uh, this past week, man. I've been tired. Um, you know, I don't think we've had a donation in four days. Um, we haven't had. Uh, we've actually lost twenty subscribers. Um, you know, I've been I've been so tired for, uh, just from working. Like I've slept not a lot, you know, and sac- to try to get on these shows, and the wrestling views are down. My, I swear to God, my channel is shadow banned again. So it looks like, it looks like I'm shadow banned because I mean, bro, I put out a video that was like CM Punk, something or other that or nobody cares about CM Punk anymore. I put this video out, bro. The the wrestling's either dying or nobody cares. I put this video out. when, When was this earlier today? It got 500 views, nine o'clock. 9 o'clock this morning, almost 10 o'clock, 10 a.m., perfect timing on a Wednesday to drop a video. It got 500 views. That's retarded. You know what I mean? Meanwhile, dumb fuck Sean's view, if he makes a video called, like, Amazing Return CM Punk, it's like 3,000 views. So I think I'm shadow banned again, and I was beating him in views for years. 
And uh, th- so he's back, and, and my channel is just shadow banned. Or, like, I don't know, or maybe people are just over. But they're not because I've seen, you know, the punk videos over there do well. So I don't know what the fuck's going on, but I think I'm shadow banned all over the place. I'm not sure if things are working. I don't know if I'm shadow banned. I don't know, like, I'm not really sure what the fuck's going on. So it's been a fucking horrible week of wrestling. All the wrestling views are down from what I can tell, at least on my, my shit. Wrestling is dead at this point. I really think so. I think it might be just done. Um, now, Mercedes Monet, her injury did get, I talked about that, that did get almost 4,000 views. So it could just be that people are sick of the punk news and, you know, somebody getting injured obviously is more, you know, you know, oh my God, you know, but somebody said to me, you know, Joe, why didn't you stream today? And I'm like, dude, I just had to take a break today. I had to take a break. I didn't think about wrestling at all today. I made that CM Punk video as soon as I woke up, and then I said, you know what? I'm not doing a video on wrestling today. I'm not doing any anything on wrestling. I'm not going live. I'm not doing anything. I'm going to relax. And, like, I cleaned the, I cleaned the house is destroyed. So I, I walked around and cleaned my house. But that being said, the Florida Panthers are going to win the Stanley Cup, guys. I told you. The minute they beat the Bruins, it was like, what the fuck's going on? And then when they swept or whatever, the Leafs, I was like, wow, bro, this... I'm telling you, Picharo, you're gonna have a you're gonna have a Stanley Cup in Florida. That team came out of nowhere, out of nowhere, and just the Bruins were too tired to continue their historic run, and the Florida Panthers hit their stride in the middle of the season towards the end. Like un, I I don't know, bro. It's nuts what they're doing. Uh, but let's get back to wrestling now that everything is working. I think. Uh, well, you know, the, the alert, I did get the alert for this show tonight. I, I will say that I haven't been getting the alerts stuff. Isn't working stuff's been fucked up, but I, I did get this alert and we will head over to discord in a few minutes. I know that we've got some, uh, some people over there and, uh, we'll talk to, uh, we'll talk to them. Looks like Jesse might be over there and it looks like, uh, Rastafa is ready to go on uh, Discord as well. So I will head over there in a few minutes and uh, see what everybody's doing. Uh, So Tony Khan did... I am a little bit surprised tonight. I will say that. Because I said my theory uh, from a while back was, okay, they're they're going to announce... They're going to announce Punk tonight. And and, and if they announce Chicago... so So they didn't do what I thought exactly. They had to announce where they were going to be tonight, but they also had to really announce where, where Collision was going to be, rather. But they had to really announce, I thought, CM Punk or Daly's place. That's what I thought was going to happen. I thought they were either going to be like, okay, we're live, we're going to be live at Daly's place. Or we're going to be live, or 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 CM Punk will be the appear return making his return at Collision. I thought one of those two... And I saw a lot of people saying Joe was Joe. You're right. You were right. Blah blah blah. And I, I honestly, I don't, I, don't, I wasn't because I, I, I mean, I kinda think I am, but it's not. Announcing it at United Center in Chicago, though, that to me tells me that, okay, I think that Punk is there. The rumor is they reached a deal. I think they probably did reach a deal. And I honestly think this is them once again, sort of doing the will he, won't he show up thing. But honestly, they did that last time, so this time I would just straight up announce him. But they're not doing that. So to me, I think this is basically them saying Punk is there because if Punk wasn't going to be there, I don't think they would announce it at the United Center. I think they would have gone to their backup plan, which we saw that they had a backup plan in Daly's place. They didn't use that backup plan. So to me... Uh, it sounds like they worked it out with Punk. It's got to be. It's got to be. Shit bomb. Oh, shit. The Donos do Ring work. Ring of Honor tag titles main event of Dynamite. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Once again, Dynamite is retarded. Uh, the, I mean, AEW is retarded. The, the, A, the Ring of Honor titles, nobody cares. It's too much shit to keep track of. Tony Khan is out of his goddamn mind. It's too much to keep track of. Stop doing it, Tony Khan, you fuck. 
Alex Oli, thank you for the two dollars, man. The donations work. Holy shit, bro! I actually, shit bomb. I actually thought maybe they didn't work. How much coke did Tony negotiate for Sabu's return? Uh, that's a good point. I, you know what? Here's the thing about Sabu. I'm just happy he's getting paid. Mister Pico Boulevard Super Chats. Uh, thank you guys. At least I know the donations are working. I, I literally thought maybe they were broken. I've never. I don't think I've ever not received a dono in like four days. That's never happened. Except, like I would say, the last time that happened was going back to when I first started shit bomb launching donations. Going to all Monday. What do I say to Kevin Patrick? Uh, don't. I mean, I would say that. I wouldn't say anything to Kevin Patrick. I would say things to other people. Like get Kevin Patrick out of there. You know what I mean? I would tell Kevin Patrick to take the lead and become a man. That's what I would tell him. All right, Alex Ola, you get it? That's what I would say. Alex, thank you, bro. Thank you guys for testing the donos. They actually work. I am so fucking happy that they work. I was I was honestly concerned. And uh, I, I honestly thought maybe there was something wrong. Well, maybe it's a bad thing, but I thought <laughs> at least I know there's not something wrong. I was like, something's fucked up. It's not working right. I don't know what's happening. Um, CM Punk, um, let me see here, Sad Poo, yeah, I called him Sad Boo too, I didn't call him Sad Poo though, I said Sad Boo, Sad Boo, no, I'm happy Sad Boo gets uh, some money, you know, he lost his girl, you know what I mean, he's, he's, the health isn't the best, and I know that some people were, it was silly, you know, here, like, sad, what the hell is Sad Boo gonna do, you know, what the hell, what's going on here? I get that, and I, it is funny, kind of in a way. But I, I, I was just like, cool, Sabu, like, mostly cool because I'm happy this guy's getting a paycheck. So I'm, I'm, I'm like, cool. I don't know, paycheck for Sabu, that's cool. It's all I really all I got from him. He threw a chair tonight. Thanks for throwing a chair, Sabu. It's very wonderful. He chucked a chair at somebody, I think. I think he missed. I think he meant to hit, maybe hit somebody. I don't know. Uh, MJF wore a, a jacket tonight that reminded me of my grandmother's uh, dining room table cloth, which was uh, very beautiful. Chris Jericho has another different outfit with spikes on it. Jungle Boy jinxed himself by touching the AEW world title and pretending like he was holding it like he was the champion. That was a, uh, a little bit of a taboo mistake, I think. Uh, but okay, Jungle Toy. I don't care about the pillars. I care more about the war of 24, the bidding war, than anything else. Let's hop over uh, to Discord in just a second. Um, what's up? How you guys doing, man? We get 100, uh, 100 likes, then my, my pee-pee will do a dance if we get 100 likes. So guys, let's see if we can get 100 likes. Feel free to uh, give it a try. We're going to be heading over to Discord in just a second. I'm going to leave this briefcase, I'm gonna leave a briefcase right on here. your ass. I'm going to leave this briefcase right here. I'm going to leave this briefcase right here. It's Todd Pelkey. I'm going to leave this briefcase right here. OG uh, of the uh, show. I'm going to leave this briefcase right here. Son, run, run, you fat bitch. Run, 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 you fat bitch. Run, 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 you fat bitch. Run, 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 you fat bitch! Yeah. Run, you fucking fat bitch! Come on. Don't you think I'm a fucking terrorist? Run, you fat bitch! Oh, run, you fat bitch! Ladies and gentlemen. Never run so hot in all your damn life. The top donation coming in from Todd Pilkey. Run, you fat bitch. Thank you, Todd. Uh, Todd Pelkey coming in with the super chat party of 1999. Todd, hey man, thank you for that, dude. Really appreciate that, bro. Starving this week, you know what I mean? Joe's hungry. Joey Beg Beg is hungry, bro. Four days without donations. Joey Beg Beg is hungry. Todd Pelkey, thank you for dropping your hard earned money. Oh my God, what the fuck? Holy shit. Scissor me! The ghost from the coast! Yeah, 
baby, the ghost from the coast. It's a super chat type of night, I guess. The ghost. Hey, real quick. We're about to get into AEW Dynamite in just a few minutes. We're going to break it down from the beginning to the end. We got Rastafa. We got uh, we got Mr. Pico Boulevard. We got Jesse J. We got a whole bunch of people ready on Discord. I'm ready to go. I got a cup of coffee. And here's the thing. Before we start, before we get into the wrestling, let me just really quickly laugh at this. No matter what political party, this is funny. I hope you guys enjoy this. And I have to show you this to show you the next part. Why this is funny. Earlier, Ron DeSantis announced on Twitter that he's running for president. Here's part of the video for him running for president. Our border is a disaster. Crime infests our cities. The federal government makes it harder for families to make ends meet. And the president flounders. But decline is a choice. Watch this. Success is attainable. And freedom is worth fighting for. Riding the ship requires restoring sanity to our society, normalcy to our communities, and integrity to our institutions. So Ron DeSantis put that out. And then a little while ago, uh, Donald Trump Jr. tweeted this out. (laughs) I don't know who made this, but good Lord have the courage is it worth the sacrifice is it worth the sacrifice now whether you are a democrat a republican an independent or somebody that doesn't give a fuck either way that's going to be entertaining okay folks that's going to be entertaining DeSantis versus Trump is going to be some of the most fucking entertaining shit maybe we've ever seen since Jeb Bush and Trump. So we can look forward to that being if you're because if you like wrestling, you like a conflict and you like the good guy, bad guy thing, or maybe you like the bad guy, bad guy thing. Maybe to you, you hate them both. But either way, it's going to be good. You know what I mean? Like that's going to be fucking hilarious. Uh, So get ready for that because it is going to be a full-on fucking maniacal and entertaining goddamn time. And folks, the cup of coffee is ready to go tonight, so I want you to bring it on. I want to hear from every single buddy, every single one of you. I want to see if you're hard. In the chat at the top, the donation link is there. Streamlabs link is up there. If you want to donate, the donation amounts are listed down below. And remember, this is a brand new 1999 donation. Doesn't work in Super Chat. It only works in Streamlabs. But if you want to play the brand new 1999 donation, I don't even remember what it is anymore. Try it out tonight. We could use it. But there's also a new uh, $5.95 donation where Matt Hardy comes and uh, there's an orgasm. It's amazing. Five ninety five and nineteen ninety nine. But anyway, let's take a look at the poll for AEW before we start the AEW review and talk about this. CM Punk. I think he's coming back. I think they're doing the whole. Oh, you know, we don't know. It's Chicago, though. <laughs> they got to be doing that. They're not going to Chicago if Punk isn't there. They're not going to get trolled. They're not going to disappoint all these people and look stupid on TV. They had Daly's place lined up. They signed Punk on a couple of days ago. This morning, they had it etched in stone. They announced tonight the United Center. Expect CM Punk to be there. He will be, or they wouldn't be there doing this. I could even see them not ever announcing him. And perhaps he shows up to attack somebody or something like that. I think it will be that sort of thing. Maybe you even do something. I, I dare I. I'm not even gonna say it. I'm not even gonna say what I'm thinking. But they could, if if it's just CM Punk comes out to say Chicago, I'm back. That will be kind of like lame. I mean, it won't be lame, but it'll be like, all right, that'll be cool. But that's safe. You know what I mean? Don't do something safe. Do something wild. Do something fucking crazy, bro. You know what I mean? And I want to see Ace Steel. I want to see Ace Steel eat somebody. Wouldn't it be great if they got in a fight with the Young Bucks and Ace Steel bit them? Oh, God. Please give me that. Give me that, bro. Oh, it'd be so good. That'd be so good. Oh. 
Oh my God, it'd be so good. Oh. I uh, I am feeling I am feeling a little bit better today. Like I said, I took the whole day off. I don't work on Wednesdays anyway. Despite my allergies, which are making my face itch really bad right now. I uh, I got good rest today. For the first time in a while, I got good rest, man. Thanks to everybody who DM'd me, reached out to me on Twitter, and people that have been saying hi to me and nice and stuff like that. You guys are the best. I've been really tired and fucked up recently, so um, today was great. I got a lot of rest. I felt great. I want to thank Max, Max P, because Max P became a $10 patron supporter on patreon and max p you've now unlocked the gold vip tier on discord by being a ten dollar patron and you've unlocked over a thousand podcasts that you haven't heard on youtube ever before all right let's get into AEW. let's get into AEW. we've stalled long enough with having some fun um, let me try to load my uh, AEW broadcast real quickly. And I'm going to get over to Discord in a second because Rostov is there to guide us and everybody else. And we'll have ourselves a good time. Can you imagine, dude, my fucking YouTube TV thing is going to be all fucked up. i got to keep track of like Rampage and Dynamite. Then we're going to have Collision. I mean, Jesus Christ, bro. There's like a million fucking things that we got to keep track of. A lot of generic stuff tonight, though. You know, I thought some of the stuff building to uh, double or nothing. I mean, I can't even say double or nothing. I keep thinking of collision. The, the stuff building to double or nothing, it, it feels like it's a week too long. You know, not a ton of extra stuff was done tonight that couldn't have been done last week. It really felt like last week should have been the go home show. It just feels like they've run out of steam here towards the end that they didn't need to have another one. Hey, yes, and dude, did Tina Turner die? Because I keep seeing all this stuff about her son dying. I thought her son died. And uh, did they fuck, uh, fuck up the announcement or something? Did Tina Turner die or did her son die? I've been confused the last couple, like all day. I mean, I've been busy doing stuff, so I haven't paid 100% attention, but I can't tell what's like what's really going on here. I don't know. But I, I thought Tina Turner died today. And what's weird is me and my daughter, last night me and my daughter were watching 80s videos. And one of the top videos that came up was, what's love got to, got to with it? And I was like, that's Tina Turner. And she's like, she looks she looks freaky. Because, <laughs> you know, Tina Turner like was always cockeyed. She was like, I love got to. And my daughter's like, she looks like she's on drugs. I'm like, yeah, she <laughs> probably was. Um, but And then the day after that, today she's dead. Fucking weird, bro. Crazy. So rest in peace to Tina Turner. I love Tina Turner's, some of those hits, man. Tina Turner was great. She looked like, uh, you know, her and Sidney Lauper looked like they were on the same crack. Shit bomb. You know what I mean? Who got better card WWE or before this week eight? Who got better card WWE or AEW? Well, I mean, wait a minute. Are you talking about with, wait, with what's, wait, with Night of Champions or Double or Nothing? Is that what you're saying? Luis Urdaneta. I don't know, man. I don't know. Honestly, dude, my mind right now at wrestling is so short-sighted. I don't remember anything WWE's done right now. Like, my brain hurts trying to think past today. I've definitely got some kind of brain damage, bro. I don't know if it's from all the wrestling moves, all the things over the years. I don't know. But Night of Champions, I'd have to look I'd have to compare the cards. Did Night of Champions happen already? I don't even fucking Bro, I don't know what's going on anymore. Okay, I'm living day to day, paycheck to paycheck. Like, dude, there was one day I got home from work and I I went and door dashed in the middle of the night. Like like I mean, bro, because I was out of money. Like, I don't know what's going on, bro. I don't remember what's happening in WWE. I don't remember. I work in so doing so many different things. Like it's fucking crazy, bro. Um I I I I think that um here's the thing. I think that um I don't remember. 
<laughs> I'm going to be honest with you, dude. I don't remember what WWE has done. What was the last pay-per-view? Somebody in the chat tell me. No, it's Saturday? Oh, that's right. Okay, Saturday. There you go. Saturday is WWE. We'd have to compare the cards. By the way, I'm not going to be able to be here with you guys to cover it Saturday because I'll, I, I won't be working, so I won't be here. Um, so, yeah, I actually won't be able to cover Night of Champions, which will actually be Day of Champions for us here in the U.S. Uh, but, yeah, so I don't know. We'll see. And I, I actually won't be able to watch it until later. So... I don't know, bro. Backlash happened. Yeah, that's right. Backlash happened. Backlash was pretty good. Backlash was like, what, what do we give Backlash? Like a 7.5 or an 8? We gave it a pretty good rating. So I guess it's up to them to try to beat that. You know? At this point, can they beat it? Can I don't know. We'll see. Oh, fuck it. Here we go. Everyone knows I'm out the window. Yup. Yo, motherfucker. No, bro. Yes. Because there ain't no. Women's blood and guts match at Wembley. Yes. Also, Jade loses to Taya come Sunday. Oh no, you think so? I don't think so, Blair Eliason. But that that I mean, that could happen. It's this is one of the most built up threats yet that Jade has had. But I'm gonna say that Jade retains still. But I don't know. There's your I I will see. Woman's blood and guts match at Wembley. That would be cool. I'm down with it, Blair Eliason. I'm down with a woman's bloodbath. Okay? I'm down with a woman's bloodbath. That's the top dono of the stream, by the way. Let's put that up. Blair Eliason, top donation of the stream after a drought of... Empty. Blair Eliason, $30, top dog. I'm putting you up there. Um, All right, let's, I guess, well, let's go, th I guess there's a couple more donos. Let's go through some donos, I think. I don't know. I'm going to leave them on. And then we'll head over to start the, I'm going to start from the beginning to the end with the review, and I'm saving it for Rostafa because I know Rostafa always likes to tee it up. You know what I mean? Tee up AEW Rampage. I mean Dynamite. What do you think Dynamite was tonight out of 10, though? In the chat, leave some ratings. I know that we did a poll already, so the poll's kind of hinting at it already, but I thought tonight was a, I don't know, man. In, in realistically, I would probably give tonight a 5.8, you know, but I'd probably give them the 6, but it's probably not. It's, to me, I don't know, maybe a 5.5. Maybe I'll go low on it. I'll give it a 5.5. I was not that entertained tonight by a lot. You know, it really was not my thing tonight I was not feeling a lot of what they were doing tonight and maybe that's on me but I was wide awake Sandman Sizzle hey shout out to all the members in the chat by the way thank you guys for being members uh, and supporting me monthly with the membership that's fucking huge thank you um, Texas Chode House one of the best names ever Louis Erdinetta Ghetto Gods in the house. Joe Bishop's here. Brian, what's up? Spectral Citizen, as always. And uh, we got... We got... Uh, Colonel Stutters, Blake, Riddenstein, uh, Sandman, Sizzle, and a bunch of people in the membership section. Thank you. So, yeah, so, like, I was pretty positive. Not, not only, as you can tell, I got sleep today, so not only was I awake... For AEW, I was juiced up. I've had coffee. I've been watching all of it. I've been into it. I'm ready. It's a go home show. I'm like, yeah, let's go. And you know, there hasn't there. It's I don't know. I just it didn't do it for me that that well. 
Man, all super chats tonight. What happened to Streamlabs? Did Streamlabs get did people get cooties on Streamlabs? What's happening? What is going on tonight? Well, like well, this is like a record for poor, poor Streamlabs. Super chats are taking over, brother. Super chat parties are taking over. All right, let's uh let's tie it up here. Todd, There's something going on up in space. There's something going on up in this place. Oh, it's There's something weird kind of happening. <laughs> strange kind of happening. Things are kind of happening. What the fuck it's is Todd happening? Pelkey. Aliens, extraterrestrials. I'm going to kill you, man. Nanotechnology. Ah, ah, I'm not me. Ah, ah, you're not you. La, la, la. Ah, oh. I'm fucking crazy, split personality, Scott McKinnon. <laughs> 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 Yo, the man himself, Todd Pelkey. Todd Pelkey drops a forty-nine ninety-nine bomb tonight with a super chat bomb, and now we head over. To the Discord, Todd. Thank you so much, bro. Man, Todd. People are trying to keep this shit alive tonight. They saved the AW reviews. Um, Todd Pilkey. Uh, forty nine ninety nine. He he slides into the Allison Tuckwab spot with the forty nine ninety nine, and now it's time to hit. The Discord. And uh, JB, would you leave me out with a chant real quickly? What do you mean? I um, I have all my guests chant the, uh, uh, an exp- a thing that I say all the time, you Hollywood. Would you mind chanting with me before I end the show? Going to have to pass. Okay. You Hollywood, you Hollywood, you Hollywood. Keep doing it, Jesus. folks. Keep- What's up, everybody? Rustafa. How you feeling, brother? I don't even know how to feel after watching this go home show. To be honest with you, sleepy sucked. You guys, yeah, I you, honestly, wow. I don't like know it. how to feel after watching the show. I was hyped up. Here's here's how I know that a lot of people didn't like it. I was hyped up, like watching the show tonight. I was like, yeah, okay, AEW, and then the show flew by to me, and I, I didn't think it was very well paced, but it flew by to me, and I was like, wow, and and I think it's a five five. You know what I mean? And I was I, I was in a good mood watching it. Joe, I need to answer. I need somebody to answer the big white elephant in the room. And this is – and again, we're going to go through this whole show. But for the love of God, what does Sabu have to do with Adam Cole and Chris Jericho? Jericho wants to give him money. That's. I'm telling you that's the answer. Because he lives in Vegas, I think they said it. Yes, he lives. There you go. He well, lives in Vegas, and I'm. I, I guarantee it went something like this. You know, what I'd like to do. You know, I'd like to do this behind the scenes. Chris Jericho is like, you know, Sabu's really been going through a tough time. I, I, I'd love. I, I, you know, I want to take care of the guy. Like, let's book Sabu. He lives in Vegas. We can have him come out. Like, I guarantee it was his idea, and it stems Sam from. Was busy. It, it right. It, it. I thought Ryback should come out with him. That would have been great. I'm like, I hope it's Shit, Ryback. Vegas. Boom, 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 dude. Why don't? But, why? but this is just the thing, though. And again, this is nothing against Sabu or his finances or anything like that. Again, I get that point of view, but I'm just saying, mainly from a story point of view, where does he fit in the equation? He's like an enforcer for them, I guess. I yeah, I get, I I see that, but why specifically Sabu? Like it's it's well, that's one of those well, that's because it's, like, it's a plot hole because they're it's only because. It's like all the movies now that suck because they we had to put an Asian guy in the show. You know, it they it was it all it only comes from it only comes because Jericho wanted the guy to get paid, which is fine with me, but it it doesn't make sense. That's it. That's all it is. Couldn't track okay. down Rave. <laughs> yeah, I get well, Raven again, to come out like too. I said, the la- the last time Sabu's really been involved with like a major promotion. I mean, I think he might have, might have done some Ring of Honor shows here and there, but the last one that I remember was, like, back in the old TNA, you know, when they had that hardcore Justice pay-per-view and all the ECW guys came in, and you couldn't even say ECW. 
So that was like the last thing I remember seeing. And again, he pops up on the indies everywhere, you know, and unfortunately, yeah, he has been going through a lot of health issues. He's been going through, I mean, again, he still looks great, but the fact that he had to wear like, you know, a three piece suit just to kind of like, you know, yeah. not be full gimmick was, you know, a bit sort of kind of taking it back. Cause I was thinking like, okay, it's Vegas. Who could they get maybe as a special attraction? Maybe Shamrock. He hasn't necessarily been on a national televised wrestling show in a long time. This could be good for him. Uh, I guess people will say, oh, he was an impact, but that, I'm not talking, I'm talking national television and not just those networks that you only get maybe a couple hundred thousand people watching, if not under that. So, you know, again, I was thinking somebody like that, but the fact that when he went homicidal, suicide, I'm like, they got Sabu. I'm like, okay. How does this fit? <laughs> but again, I'm happy that he gets a payday. Great. If he gets a payday, that's great. But it's, you know, storyline, it just threw me off. I'm just like looking at this going, okay, so he's going to be an enforcer with four, with four other guys with Jericho and just Roderick Strong. And I was just like, oh, this is going to be interesting. So, mm -hmm. so but anyways, let's go, to, let's go to the top of the show. So they're at the MDF. Yeah, they get Taz involved. He's too old and hurt. Well, yeah, he has a broken neck and he's retired. So, and he's yeah. he's better on the commentary booth than just being in the ring, getting you know stacked up. But anyways, yeah, so they're at the MGM good. Grand in Vegas, and uh, start off with the uh, international title being on the line. We had Orange Cassidy taking on uh, Fletcher, Ryan Fletcher, and yeah, it, this one it, again. I I love Orange Cassidy's matches, but honestly, they've all really been the same without any type of like. I mean, again, the finishes are good. But I just feel like I'm watching the same match. Yeah, he's been dead for a while now. Every week when I see him, it's like it's nice, but he's just nothing. Like I tonight was better with whatever the other guys were doing. He's been yeah. Orange Cassidy is just his promos. Like he he has a match, and it's like all right, we've seen this a bunch. I guess it's okay. And then he has a promo that's like stupid. And it's like, where is this supposed to go? Nowhere. And again, I I love him as the champion as far as like, you know, being, you know, a, a, like a mid-card champion at the current moment. He's been doing a lot with that belt, to be quite honest with you. But again, it's like I want to see more depth from him as a character in terms of him really being in danger of him actually losing. And what does that mean for him if he comes that close to losing? Like, what is he willing to do even as a baby face? And that that's not being shown just because his gimmick is basically saying, I don't care. Well, the thing is, even if in a gimmick where you don't care about much, there's still a part of you that does care. That's why the audience has a connection with you because they want to care about you. Yeah. And, unfo and unfortunately, it's just I, I want to care about him more. But it's like as a champion, it's like there's only so much I could care about. You know, you know, it, it, like was... you know, he, he needs to do something. I mean, he's got nothing. It, 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 you know, it'd be funny, dude. I don't know. I'm just thinking off the randomly. You know, if he said something like tonight, I'm gonna go out there, and uh, it's daddy time. I, I would be like, what? It's daddy time. What? What the hell? Well, is he the, here's, here's, like, I, I, I would actually thing. think that's funny. Like, he, just do anything that's anything that's funny. Because this whole I mean, like this uh, off the cuff, like a Danhausen type of humor time. that it just comes out of nowhere, and it's just like, yeah, no, I know what you mean by that, but like, I I get the sense that he is at a point where, like, again, like when they were building up, remember a couple of weeks ago, like he would have matches and he was constantly getting injured, or he would get little injuries here and there, and they were building up. Like, it would have just been funny if, let's just say. He just came out like a freaking mummy. He just had a wraps all around him just because of how injured he was. But yet he somehow makes that work in a certain sense where, okay, I'm working hurt, but I'm still able to win and I'm still able to, you know, do this and that. Like I was liking that, but again, the matches were still the same. So it'd be wasn't funny if he, you know, was, he wasn't... it'd be funny if he was on a losing streak because he was so hurt, like you just said, and he almost is like a crash test dummy for like six weeks. And then finally, one week he wins for the first time in six weeks. Be like he, I don't know. He like comes out of it or he heals up. I don't know. Like just anything would be better than I'm just gonna go out wrestle and then say nothing. Go out wrestle and say nothing. Go out wrestle and say nothing. That's what he's doing. By the way, this is randomly. This is random and not anything to do with this. But I watched that Sasha Banks match the other week, and I'm pretty sure this is the match I saw it in. 
I think someone gave someone a pile, a tombstone pile driver, and then Sasha grabbed the girl's leg right after she did the tombstone pile driver, so to stop her from going to the top rope. And I was like, bro, she just gave her a spike tombstone pile driver, and then Sasha, like, as she went to go, a lady went to go up on the top rope, Sasha Willow, I think it is, she reached out and grabbed her leg to stop her. And I went, dude, what the fuck kind of no-sell is that on the tombstone? Like, it was unbelievable. Oh, we'll talk about no-selling. We'll I, talk I about no-selling. There's, like, there's a lot of that going on. Crap. I fucking I just, hate oh. the independent scenes, like, ruining of the tombstone. Like, the super kick is one thing. But the fucking tombstone pile driver, like, everybody and their mother does it. And they do the same, everyone like, does it. Countering. Everyone does it, and it's not as special. That's another thing, well, too. You're bringing well, all these big here's pictures, what they, and especially when they're kicking out at two. Yeah, they're kicking out one sometimes. But nonetheless, they're it's all the fucking same. Like, like they do the counter spot where this guy's going to hit the tombstone, but the guy counters and is going to hit him with the tombstone, but the guy counters again. And it's like, Oh my God, you see how many almost tombstones we got. And then nobody sells anyway. So it's like, what the, what the fuck was the point of even building that? Well, spot well to, up? Be fair, to, be, to be fair, there was a lot of reversal tombstones, even in the nineties with like a lot of like the mid card talent, like a Guerrero and Malenko. Yeah, and, and they're those gay. Guys. They were gay. <laughs> killed themselves for that. Oh man! Well, Eddie, that's why Ben. So, that's why Ben Wa, That's so, why Ben Wa, He served his penance by by killing his family and himself oh. for all those gay tombstones that he did. Jesus. Yeah, Eddie I, died before he could get to him. I just hope <laughs> Orange Cassidy defends the international title at their only international event. That would be nice. Oh, can you imagine if they didn't just to rib the fans? Oh my God. Just a ribbo. But yeah. at any rate, so going towards uh, the next uh, segment, we had Ricky Starks in the back cutting a promo about um, uh, his involvement with the pay-per-view at the, uh, I guess, what is it called, the Blackjack uh, uh, Rumble, wherever you want to call it, Battle Royal, and he ends up getting jumped by the Bullet Club. Yeah, I, 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 I didn't care about that that much either. Once again, the two generic guys attacking him, I don't, it's like I don't really care. Two, two generic guys. And I know some people love Ricky Stark or whatever. Some people like Jay White. I don't know. You might as well, dude. You might as well call it generic. Like the whole thing. Ricky, Ricky, is that his name? Ricky Starks. I don't know. Ricky Stark. Ricky yeah. Starks is boring, generic to me for the most part. He's like a step above that, but he's not quite anything. And then Jay White and the other guy. It's the whole thing was just boring. I was like, okay. I love his promo, to be quite honest with you. I mean, I remember when he first appeared on NWA Power. I mean, I, I was just, you know, I fell in love with his promos. But now as far as in-ring ability, again, he's a smaller guy. I like him in the as ring. A baby but... face, as a baby face, he can get the people behind him. But to the point where the TV audience is another story. So I can't necessarily really say, like, you know, can he can, can he be more? Yeah. But as far as right now, yeah, it's it's, it's, it's like a weird spot for him to be in. It's just not that, you know, it's a night, it's a little thing, but I think it's been heavily focused on. I think it would be fine what's going on with them if it was like less focused on cuz it's not that big of a thing to me. I don't care. I don't care who wins the match. Like I don't care. Like I actually well, don't care. Who Jay and Juice Robinson are, so that's the thing and, and by the way i can't remember which promo it was but ricky starks a number of weeks ago basically buried the name of the bullet club because you know the fact of the matter is that the bullet club is just that it's like an old relic all due respect with no emphasis because the last time it was really great or even relevant was when kenny the bucks cody and all those guys hangman were all in the bullet club and this was right before aw even started hmm. and that was like the last like peak of them yeah, they actually kind of fucked really over. Relevant. They kind of, they kind of fucked over that group because they were just like, yeah, even though we used you for brand recognition, we're gonna just, we're gonna just go with the whole elite thing. So I don't think people I, still, I, well, thing, some people the still thing, call them already, the Bullet Club. They were already the elite before they got into the Bullet Club. It's just that the elite grew, like you know, with a couple more members that were just added on. And, I don't think um, they were the. I, were they a, were they the elite before the Bullet Club, or were they a, yeah. the elite while they were in the Bullet Club? Yes, because I, believe... Ken, I thought Kenny. I thought they were the Bullet Sorry. Club first, and that's when they formed the elite. At, but I could be wrong. I, I, I because I, I, Kenny I believe... Kenny joined later, but the Bucks were already there in like 2014. Yes, yeah, I I, I actually miss I misspoke. Basically, they were friends even before. Like, and I'm talking outside oh. the ring. I 
as for, and, and and that became like that became like their little thing, and then they emphasized it on TV to be part of like you yeah. know the Bullet Club when they were in the Bullet Club. My bad, yeah. So that that is isn't correct. It crazy, but... Isn't it crazy that that all started with the click, and then in like some 10, 15 years later, somebody was just like, hey, "What if this was our thing now? <laughs> we're like the NWO, but with skulls." Well, Ugh. that's it's the thing. That's the thing. It was just basically stealing giving. It really started with the Bucks, if you think about it, because the Bucks were really going nowhere. And then finally, it was like, you know what? If we're going to be doing something in wrestling, and this is right before Nick decided he thought he was going to call it quits. Matt's like, dude, let's just have fun. Let's just do what we want to do. And they started doing the super kick thing. Then he started doing the, you know, eventually oh. the too sweet thing when they joined the Bullet Club. I mean, it was just a bunch of 90s They did references. somebody else's gimmick. They did somebody else's well, that- gimmick. And they're like, oh, my God, it got over. Can you believe it? Well, it did get over, and the fact that they sold merch on that, I mean, again, kudos to them. Because, again, you know how difficult it is to ride off somebody else's gimmick, and yet – I mean, yeah, they eventually got cease and desist orders. Not really yet. that it's difficult. Still the, a while. Well, no, no, that's the thing. Not you steal difficult. somebody's gimmick, you make, you make money off of it for a long period of time, as much as they did, plus also working for various brands. And then eventually the E, as they called it, or New York pretty much ceased and desist them, and – they made they put that into a, a humorous bit on BTE, so I'm like, hey man, I guess they win. Yeah, damn it! How um, dare the WWE try to sue those two for or tr- try to keep them from doing that um, when it's not their gimmick? Um, probably because well, they had no real ideas, so they're just like, oh, you know, let's take some stuff that's actually interesting and then just steal it. And like we're gonna say, oh no, they 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 added upon it. No, they didn't. The fucking well, young bucks stuff. Kevin Nash has got all for a couple years because they were portraying their characters from that. Which again, the intellectual property. I Vince is always obsessed with that, but still, it's like, come on, come on. They they left the company. They're and you're worried about them making money, but dude, you're not focusing on your talent. Like, stop it. But at any rate, going towards uh, the next segment, we have the four pillars and their promo. What did you think, what, Joe? What did you think about their promo? Because honestly, uh, I was like in and out of it. Yeah, no, I know. I listen. MJF had a halfway decent thing that he said, I guess, and then everybody else is forgettable. That's what happened. Honestly, that's, yeah. That's I it. mean, again, the the only person, and this is just my opinion, the only person I found even remotely believable was Darby. I mean, yeah, and even yeah, Darby. If I it's... Have to hear about his car one more time, he better be telling me like what the everything about the engine. Quit talking right. about how you lived in it. I know. Yeah, everything Darby says, it's starting to get old. He's like becoming worse than Cody. Cody's whole thing we've heard, but Darby's every time, man, I had to fight for everything. I lived I lived in a car, my father, we know. Bro. Like Jesus. It's just like bro. I totally respect that. It's just uh, it's being over who the fuck's no. writing it? like I don't yeah, know we what do. who's It's like we respect what? it. Yeah, we know we do. It's like yeah. everybody respects it, but it's like you gotta st- Say something well, else why eventually. Does it sound so badly like they're reciting it as if they're being, they're doing like WWE, like as if there's a hundred fucking writers in chart or something. Yeah, like it's, not, it's like shit, shit bum. bum. Oh shit. Dirty thoughts of Tina Turner's legs and jar of salsa. What's love got to do? Got to do with it. What's love? Like, I, oh my God, bro. I would, dude, imagine Tina Turner riding you back in the day when she was like 30. Like, she'd be like, oh, and Mad man. Max, dude. And Mad Max. Yeah, yes. Oh, and you're, oh my God. You're just like, ah. Christ. Rolling down. To go beyond her Thunderdome. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Open oh, space. There's something going the on ghost. in this place. From the There's ghost. Something weird gonna happen in strange gonna happen in things are kind of happen. I'll give you brownie what points. What the fuck is happening? Hey, that one. Aliens, extraterrestrials. They gave me a shot. Nanotechnology. <laughs> I'll kill your family, man. I'm not me. I'll be trying to do it one time. Uh, you're not you. Oh. Uh, uh, uh. I'm fucking crazy. I'm ready to hang up on the car. No, we got sweat the first I'll just meet him. Fucking idiot. Sad po oh. Old bitch can't even look up like if he was a dog. Uh oh Jesus Christ. Sad poo is here. It's uh the ghost from the coast up. dropping one for sad poo. The bitch can't even look up like if he was a dog. What the fuck, dude? 
Oh stuff. my god, man. Our- Wow. All right, so House of Black and uh, are defending their uh, ROH six men uh, six men titles. Or, I'm sorry, the AEW six men titles. I, I can't believe you just buried Zabu oh, like. Oh, it's always trying to penetrate people. There's something going what on. What the? It's a replay. In space. Oh that my last god. Day is on up in this place. There's something weird gotta happen. Oh shit! It's it's Tuckwab. She's here. Did Sabu give you all his hay he made for the night? Oh. Oh. Allison Tuckwab. He had to buy crazy for his wounds. The ghost from the coast <laughs> is taking over the top spot. The ghost. I'm fucking crazy. Split personality. Scott McKinnon. The Tuckwab is here. Tuckwab uh, sounds like the stuff that's in the bathing suits at Target. Tuck mm. it right in. <laughs> in, in, in. In aisle four, the dollar section. Yes, it's gone now. Allison, thank you so much, Allison. The alien time. They're not stealing if so, they're yeah, putting the different that. stuff out. That's right, Allison. Good point. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we have about Tina Turner's in her, in her legs. She had very famous legs. Oh, yeah. They were awesome. I don't know if you're a leg guy or whatever. Oh, I'm yeah. There's no... Joe, take your pill. Guess what, hockey? What? What? Guess what, hockey? White cracker. None of your lives matter. (laughs) Is that you? Is that you? No, that's Scott. I mean, they played the alien song, so I just I dig up. Oh, that's yeah. Oh, jeez. Guess that's what, gonna hockey? Be, that's going to be fun to have to deal with in the chat. No, die, it's just a great die, clip. It's a great clip. White cracker. None of your lives matter. <laughs> Eat, Joe, get it. All it's, three. It's a, it's a classic. It's a classic. Oh, that's classic. a classic? Yeah, it's old. It's an old thing. You can't even tell anymore. Right. Yeah, it all just well, kind of blends not together. Old. We had a gimmick match with House of Black defending their six person titles. I was not curious of like I mean, obviously this was gonna be obviously a no DQ match of some kind, but uh what did you think of that? I thought it was weird. What no DQ match? It was <laughs> it was House of Black defending oh, yeah. their AEW six person I, titles. I can't stand when they change the lighting for them. I don't know why. It looked cool though, but was I don't... It? Wasn't no DQs one of AEW's big things in the beginning that they just kind of got rid of, I guess? Well, yeah, yeah, they had lights out, and apparently it wouldn't count when it comes to your record. By the way, are, is, is, does AEW really even give a damn about their win-loss record anymore? Since oh, yeah, the Cody rankings? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know what? I yeah, like the whole idea. Of, I like the whole they idea of care. a ranking system. Like, I I think that's honestly one of the more interesting parts about AEW. Um, so I'm sad to see to hear that they're not I, actually here, here's the problem keeping with up with it. Anymore. What they should have done. The problem with the ranking system is they they at first they made it seem like a big deal that they were gonna do all this stuff with it, and now they don't. So it's like people are still kind of like what? And what they really should have just done is they should have kept track of it, and they should have you know announced people's records if they wanted to because sometimes that that can be turned into a storyline. But for the most part, you just kind of ignore it. But they shouldn't. What they shouldn't have done is just not have said it was going to be such a prominent thing. Because now that it like mini exists, it, people kind of get aggravated uh, still. Where it's like, but if they had never said anything about the rankings, about what they're going to do with the rankings, and they had just done it like how they're doing it, you wouldn't really think yeah. anything. You'd be like, that's cool that, that you they show well, the, and it's the like record. The, the, the Jay Cargo thing, like same thing you're saying. It's like if they could have done what they're doing with her as well as that's gone without saying anything about the rankings either. It's like they didn't utilize it at all. 
I don't think, Speaking right? of big cargo, let's let's just go straight to that. So we have, you know, we have uh, Valkyrie. We have Valkyrie taking on um, uh, Lady Frost. Which, by the way, I did keep track of a bit of her work in uh, in a bit in Impact Wrestling and a few other different places. And she's actually a pretty damn good worker. But uh, this match was just basically is basically she was just like sort of kind of like you know, uh, just there to just make Valkyrie look and basically did the whole thing with Jade's finish and teasing Jade and they're having the match with Thunder. I mean, I, Joe, should Jade at this point, despite the fact that, yes, she has improved here and there, but not much, should she drop her title this Sunday? No, because honestly, Taya Valkyrie yeah. is maybe a little better in the ring than her, but they've got, no, I, I absolutely not. I think they're building up Valkyrie to be a formidable opponent. But I, I no, she, I can't believe she's gonna lose the belt if she if she did. So who, so who, so who would be the woman to take the belt off Jade? Is my question. Is my next question basically? It will have to be somebody that the fans get behind, or that it's worth <laughs> it's, it's worth it. It's another, it's it's honestly they're in a Roman situation right now. They're waiting for somebody who's a star, uh, because then it's worth having you know Jade be conquered by the hero or somebody who's epic. Yeah. At this point, you can't yeah. just take the belt off her. What the fuck? The face right now. Luke coming. Yeah. Oh my what? god. What? Luke having <laughs> so Luke Luke? Valkyrie Luke? Was like flight of the Valkyries or something like that song. Luke, Luke, Luke is having sex with his sister again. Ew. Ew. Say that. Say that. That was in confidence, I told you. you Sorry. Fucking jackass. TSS is here. Chris Stratlander probably when she comes back. That's TSS? true. Yeah, TSS too. TSS is here in the chat? Yeah, he's here. Oh, he's TSS. Still, uh, send me that, that video that video of name in years. 2018. Send me that video. It's I think I've had conversations with him he about it. He has it on his channel. No, I've, I've sent him. No. I've sent him. Uh, we've talked off air about this. He got the videos taken down and he, and he doesn't have them, I think. <laughs> Now, but I will say this, somewhere, somewhere on a hard drive, I anticipated this years ago in 2021 or 20, I forget which year, I saved all of them somewhere. So I just got to find him. I got him somewhere. I've seen his, his videos like just a, like no. the other day. Yeah, no, but he only has 18 or something and 18 and 20, but 19 and I think either 17, I think he, ha he has 17, and 18, 19, and 21 are missing because they got taken down. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, because 18 was a gold mine of stuff. That yeah. was like probably my favorite countdown that he had. Yeah. Uh, oh, you're talking just... about the year-end reviews. Yes. Okay, I get yes, you. Yes, yes. No, well, all yeah, his other yeah. ones are still... <laughs> You know what, though? Joe I was just, I'm looking through his, um, I'm looking through his videos, and one of the things I saw was, um, <laughs> do you remember Potion? <laughs> yes. Yo, yeah, potion. On, on just like down. locomotion. Beep, 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 beep. <laughs> yeah, that was hilarious. Joe, no, that my, was one of the favorite, first. My favorite, my favorite deal was when Joe cashed in money in the bank. <laughs> He's like, you know what, dude? Uh, you you know, you, you're, you're the better man. You're this and that. But not anymore. What I can't see I think He's got Michael Jackson's beat it playing in the background. <laughs> and then he the loses, bear. too. Joe, when, yeah. when he cashed in that money in the bank, he lost. I lost it was it. the most hard. And he's like screaming at the top of his lungs. <laughs> that was and that was literally. <laughs> there's one. Is that the night that Leah shaved my head? Yes. No, no, that was no. That was a oh, was that was a night. different one. I don't remember. That was oh. when you sang Pantera at the end of the show. Okay. That was episode 153. Okay. Jesus. Oh, that's when, yeah, that's when Joe famous. looked like an emo. He looked like an emo with I the think drooping. that was when famous. I think that was when Famous B was on the show. Yeah. Yeah. I talked to Famous B a few weeks ago. He's friends with Taya Valkyrie, so he probably hoping she huh. wins. So well, like un with the, with unfamous B. Did you just call him unfamous B? Because nobody fucking knows who he is. I think I've only found one video of another YouTube channel talking about him, and it was like <laughs> it was like a three minute clip. Infamous. Unfamous. He's infamous. B. Oh uh, yeah, that's right. You're right. Infamous. Like three amigos. Yeah. Oh yeah, it was 151. Yeah. Cause yeah, there's Leah. 
and I was doing some. Yeah, kind you of know somebody's along. somebody's really famous when they want to show up on a podcast that gets like two hundred people watching live. That's that's the telltale sign of a famous person. <laughs> oh my god, famous B. He's breaking stuff right now in his room. If he's listening, he's like motherfucker. <laughs> so, in his cheap fucking room that that only a famous person can have. Speaking of a famous person breaking up a, uh, a, a a horrible room, basically we had the contract signing with obviously Adam Cole and Chris Jericho. We just spoke about it before about Sabu being, I guess, an enforcer of some kind. Again, I mean, it's nice to see Sabu, but like I said, it just it was just a weird pairing because i'm thinking to myself what history does adam cole or roderick strong have with sabu because i told you the answer exactly. already it's not going to make any sense it's just about like here's some money and you're in town here's, yeah, a, here's a, a question i have is why running that doesn't go awry have you ever seen that has there ever been one what you know something's going to happen when there's a contract sign oh yeah it never goes it never goes to plan ever. right i think well there i was think no, trish there was no and problem. becky had one I think Trish and Becky just had one that didn't go awry, or maybe it did. I didn't, I didn't really finish the whole segment because it was terrible. Yeah, but the the dog barking reference was was nice. Yeah, well, yeah. Then after after, after the contract like, signing, oh, I mean, uh, I've watched that clip several times uh, for educational purposes, so I understood the reference. So yeah, Roderick Strong had the had the uh, the match against the. Oh my god. I keep- <laughs> Keep forgetting his name. Oh my God, Jericho Sabu. No, not Sabu. Sabu's Sabu. Sabu yeah. Dubu. Listen, why is Roderick Strong being put in no disqualification hardcore matches? Roderick Strong is like a great, just like intercontinental championship type of wrestler. Like, like the guy that you would want to see wrestle every week in like these fucking like 10 15 minute matches or whatever you know if it's it's gonna be that long yeah yeah like roderick strong i just never got that impression that he was like this hardcore guy you know and i saw him like sorry no 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 no. i'm sorry for interrupting luke but i was just saying like what about benoit and and again people like that that were or even jericho like yeah they're they're technical wrestlers but again that doesn't mean they can't brawl Mm. No, I'm just saying when you're first introducing him to your show, you'd think you would have him in a lot more like normal one-on-one single matches instead oh, yeah, of just yeah, brawl. Yeah, I got you on that. I got you on that. Well, no, no I think, think he would be more... You, when you first introduce him, he's in some kind of hectic storyline where he really doesn't have a regular regiment of wrestling yet, and he does not in the title picture yet because he just got here. So he's being utilized by a group. So, I, you know, I don't agree with that. I think it makes sense what he's doing right now, and eventually he'll settle into that. It's like when the Radicals showed up in the WWE. It's like they were fucking all over the place just causing chaos. Yeah, look then, where that went. Well, yeah, I mean... Two dead people. <laughs> um, but then, oh, God. <laughs> Damn, no, that really uh, happened. Really? Actually, actually, really? actually, four if you think about it. Four, you go. <laughs> wow. I think it's four. I think it's four if you total it up. But um, if you tell <laughs> Moppy, you got raped. But uh, well, you know. be soon. <laughs> but no, um, what was I gonna say? I love Roderick Strong, like as an in-ring wrestler. Like I think, you know, he's never been great on promos. In fact, any promo segment he has to cut, um, usually falls apart if it's longer than like a minute and a half. But he's great in that ring. I love seeing him wrestle. He had that. Remember that fucking awesome match he had with like Matt Riddle, um, at Takeover Twenty Five, and just like those types of matches. He's a great like opening of the card he's type wrestler. Thing. He's a great technical yeah, wrestler. A, he really is. Yeah, I just, he can, he can work. Gr- funny guy with a hat now, I guess. Uh, well, no, 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 no. He's the enforcer. He's, he's the enforcer with comic relief, and if they need him to wrestle, he'll wrestle. But, again, he's also doing MMA, so you got to keep him healthy. I Dude, I, he, he, I I've seen breathe. people literally kick the air harder than he kicks these motherfuckers. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, he was well, kicking right. the air hard uh, Benoit when he was hanging himself on his, on his oh machine oh my god I see stars bro Jesus. there's stars <laughs> everywhere oh my god he I'm did, laughing so hard did, there's like, stars like, all over the place right now stars you seeing like little fuzzy things yeah no the little blinking you know that motherfucker did a bunch of like Hindu squats before he did this shit 
just to psych oh, himself up. God, Jesse. Oh my god. Hey, uh, real quick, T Rev did donate uh, the other day. I missed it. Uh what's up, buddy? Hope all is well. Have a good show, brother. Uh T Rev twenty four times. Thank you, OG, for that okay, too. So Tony Pong announced what we kind of felt was gonna be the case, but we didn't know for sure. The first collision show is gonna be in Chicago, but didn't announce punk. Right. So that makes me and I said this earlier. I said I I, ex I expected them to say we're going to be at Daly's place or CM Punk's there. And instead we got we'll be at United Center, which I didn't I expect. That. I heard this dude, but I only heard it one place. I just don't remember. Like it was one of the it had a lot. They had a lot of views, but I don't know how much pool they have in, in all this shit. But they said so Joe. Oh, they sorry, thought sorry. That it was from CM Punk, like that that was at his request. He was there's like when they were, you know, like not they hadn't come to terms yet. During that time, yeah. like in the last week, that's when I heard it. And I don't, I haven't really heard that anywhere else, though. Well, I mean, I if... can pretty much tell you after fucking assholes report from Fuckful and other people that, yeah, they've agreed on something at this point. This morning, they oh, yeah. by this morning, yeah. it was agreed upon for sure. But I'm so wondering, Joe, so Joe, what, what are ticket sales looking, looking like based on the video that you made earlier? Have ticket sales at all? Yeah. Increase even though that there's no announcement. It's, too, of CM it's Punk. too early right now. We won't. They won't really know a little bit of that until tomorrow, and probably by probably around tomorrow afternoon to the next day. You know, that's when they'll be like, okay, we made the announcement on on Dynamite. Let's see what happens. Well, again, again, tickets. they sold that when CM Punk first debuted. They sold because when CM Punk debuted, I mean, they sold out that building by a rumor, really. So again, yeah. to say that this won't be a good show, or at least at least. Not maybe not a quite a sellout, but at least close enough to it. It wouldn't necessarily be a shocker because I, again, it I just seems like they're doing it again. They're, they're doing it again. He's yeah. gonna be there again, and it's gonna be. I just hope it's not. I don't want it, it. It will be good either way, but I just hope it's not like. Guess what? I'm back, and he comes out. I want him to come out when something fucking crazy is going on. But hey, Joe, this is what I, he's gonna say. Ready? He's yeah. gonna go. I'm back. Oh my god. I'll throw up all oh my myself. <laughs> Let's... And then and then he's gonna follow it up. He's gonna follow it up either with this. Did you miss me? Or looks like I've missed a lot since I've been gone. No, no, I hope he comes out and says, What do you want to talk about? That's what I hope he says. Hey Picharo. Oh my god. Yeah, but yo, no. Like Cody, like Cody, he would have like some little spin on it, like in the words of a fellow uh, you're wrestling, you know, someone like that. What do you guys want to talk about? But he'd say it like slightly differently. So it's like, ah, little nod to Cody, little nod to Cody. What does everybody want to talk about? That's what he'll say. I mean, Pacharo, how do you feel? He's, he's, Florida he's Panthers. What do you think, Pacharo? What do you think? You should have been your Boston Bruins. What? It should have been your Bruins. I thought you were. I but thought you were no, a Panthers know, fan. This should have not happened. Your Bruins should have been this far. Anyway. I agree yeah. with you. I, somehow Florida beat them, and now they're going to win the cup because they were that good. I'm telling you, bro. Wait, you, you don't, you're that, dude. You're that, that, I, I'm, 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 I'm now starting to think. I am now believing that maybe the Bruins didn't choke as much as I think, and the Florida is just that insane because they're about to go to the Stanley Cup. But can we be Las so Vegas? Wait, so wait, Pacharo, you're that big of a simp for Joe that you're rooting – that you think that his team should win over yours? Yeah, he should have won. I thought we were out after we were down 3-1 in the series. We gave you the toughest you run. You guys won. You guys toughest won, though. That's the thing. I know. But we don't, I don't know how we did that. But you shouldn't have won? Yeah, it should have, that should have not happened, but we did win. So you're not even – you're a fake Panthers fan no, is not. what you're saying. I can't even, yeah. even believe at that moment. Yeah. You're only a Panthers fan because they happen to have won. If the no, Bruins had won, you'd been like, "Yeah, I'm a Pan, I'm a Bruin fan." I'm not, I've been a, <laughs> I've been a Panthers. I didn't even know that they're gonna even beat the Bruins. Yeah, and you're rooting against your own fucking team. Why not? You're eating your own. You're eating your own Cubs like a fucking Panther, bro. You you know, own, bro. Uh, I'm going to. Uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and say. Uh, I'm not any you, team of. You... I'm not any team of hockey. But I'm a Patriots fan, and if the Patriots made it to like the fucking Super Bowl, I wouldn't be like they should have. They really shouldn't have made it here. It should have been fucking. Um, it should have been New York. Like, what the, shut the fuck up, dude. It's your own team. Uh, Picharo, I'm gonna go out on a limb and say, off a building. If, if Picharo oh. ever has kids, he's gonna choke them to death. I'm just gonna so, come out and say so that. If we win a Stanley oh, Cup, should I pour beer on me? What? If no, you should pour fucking Stanley acid Cup. all over you. Yeah, yeah pour, pour beer no, all over I me think you should pull. piss. I want to see you piss in a bottle 
and then take that ball and dump the piss all over yourself. Can you do that? Yeah. All you right. Can do anything. Well, it's a deal. You can do anything. I'll put thumb packs on myself. Okay. Speaking yeah, of speaking of piss poor, oh um, I mean, again, God. it wasn't necessarily piss poor. I'm kidding, but like again, it wasn't like to my expectations really. But the main event, we had mm. Claudio uh, Castanoli. We had a Ring of Honor boy. main oh, event. A Ring of Honor oh, yeah. main event. A Ring of Honor main event on the AEW Dynamite, which basically oh. had shenanigans in the finish. And uh, yeah, we have. Um, I'm gonna be uh, surprised if Tony brings up their AWA. And- Television title next week for the main event. Right. I have an announcement to make. We have a new AEW, AWA title. Like, it's just like, oh, we have a 900th belt now. Yeah. We have an eight man championship. A team of three people, of three teams, because there's only three teams of four people in it. They're going to be competing for the title. If you guys haven't noticed or not, We've had a lot of blood on the show the last few months and a lot of extreme matches. And that's why, for the first time ever, I'm here to announce the AEW Hardcore Championship. Oh, God. Oh, oh my God. 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 No, but we if they would name it something else. They'd be like the hardcore, they'd be like the death match championship. All extreme. No, they call it the all extreme championship. Yo. The all bloody guts and and hards. Blood and guts Dude, title. It'd be like some stupid convoluted Black name. Joe. What, Pacharo? Can we beat Las Vegas? What? Can we beat the Golden Knights? Yes, at this point. If you beat the Bruins, you can beat anybody. Dude, you beat Golden the Bruins. About to sweep the, the you went to game seven against the Bruins and beat them and then, sw- and then whooped everyone else's ass. You can beat the Golden fucking Showers Knights. <laughs> You're going up against JB's team, though. You know what I mean? We don't know where J. We haven't seen JB on the show in almost a, two years, but you're going up against his team. Attack Pac Man again? Uh, no, because I'm gonna mute you now. That's it. You sit so there. Yeah. Yeah. Fuck him. Fuck game, him. I hope he dies. Joey Janela. I spent fight. I spent years trying to pick a fight with Joey Janela, and what did he do? He backed away. Do you know why he's going after a midget? Because he knows the midget's a pussy and won't fight. I told you that Joey Janela. Joey Janela is a pussy. Hey, Joey Janela, you useless pussy. You should have died when you fell off that fucking building. You fucking stupid <laughs> cocksucker. <laughs> Fail your motherfucker. <laughs> Fuck away. yourself. I spent. I saw you back down against Enzo. You pussy. And you back down against me because I'm even yeah, bigger. Down against me, I'm bro. bigger than Enzo. That's why you're scared of me completely. But you're attacking a midget who has cats and can't get pussy in real life. You fucking idiot. I have three kids. Hey, I'm a man. Come after me, you stupid I fuck. Hiding from me for Wait, three can- years. Joey Janela, you are so scared of me, you pussy. I hope my whole army goes after you on Twitter tonight. You fucking you pussy. He attacked, years. He attacked JD. It's been going on for weeks. How I didn't you know doing? that, bro. Wow. Yeah, all over Twitter. Yeah. But but where well, is he with that. me? I fucking called him out a million times. We had signs in the crowd that he saw. And by the way, Enzo a has a new podcast that's actually about to air soon. I saw that, and it will be over in three months. That guy, oh, st- that guy starts Enzo. and stops. Hey, let me tell you something, fella. Ah! He fucking starts and stops more fucking projects than fucking JB it's- used to. And is despite the fact that he's like Claremont, Florida area this weekend, Enzo is headlining a show there. So well, he does a lot of indie shots. He actually just did a Jersey shot not too long ago with a company that I know. So, you know, Jersey. Well, and despite the fact that like Enzo is like, you know, there was just nothing but bad story after bad story. And like he was pretty much like disliked by a lot of the locker room in WWE. Um, he always like every story he tells is always like, yeah, me and my boy, uh, country boy, Braun Strowman. That's what I call him. Me and my boy, Cesar. Like, it's just like, I don't know. It's I, I feel like a lot of the times when he says he has these guys are his boys. Like, <laughs> actually, it's just it a like it's back in mild acquaintance. To- it was only just back in February where he's plugging MLW. <laughs> then weeks later, he gets kicked out of the company or, or he was asked to that leave. Didn't happen. That happened. didn't happen, bro. What do you- what the fuck are you even talking about? <laughs> Dude, I practically DM'd you on Twitter when you were away from WWE and everybody was giving you crap, you stupid. Yeah, well, and, I, and I don't fucking respond to some fucking Mark's Twitter thing. 
and now all of a sudden I'm the bad guy. Go kill yourself. <laughs> Fuck face. Oh yeah, and that's why. And that's why. And that's why uh, apparently Big Cass is on national TV, and you're not my brother. I want you to be on national TV, but you're not big, making big any Cass, to Big do that. Cass. Big Cass is on TV because he bloated up on coke. That's why. You should, <laughs> they feel bad for the guy. They think the guy's gonna kill himself. All right. But well, he's married. But he's married to, uh, or actually, his fiance is Diamond Down Pages' his daughter. So everybody's got to be. Yeah, he had. He went from he went from Carmella to that. All right, let's just let's just be, be real. Who's the real loser? Who's the we real loser? I pray to God you listen to this episode, <laughs> dude. Let me tell you, let me tell you something. You know, Enzo, I'm gonna come off as a sour person here for a second, but I just want to say really quickly, when I started on YouTube, when I started this show, not when I started on YouTube, 2000 fucking five but when i started on this show in 2012 13 i was it, it, dude not a, not a ton of people exactly were doing this like there was a lot of people on youtube but it wasn't like everybody bro right now everybody has a mic like this it's not special it's not special at all and what's funny is the radio people used to get mad at us because they were like people are making it on youtube and they just fucking from nothing and I was like, yeah, fuck yeah, I am. This is great because I couldn't get on the radio for whatever reason. And now I'm doing it here. See radio? I could have done well on the radio. Fuck you. But now it's not special yeah, at why all. Would you, why would you even want to do the radio, bro? No, you probably you make now. less money. But now I almost want to again because this isn't special anymore. <laughs> Everyone's got a fucking $300, $400 microphone and has a show and shit. And, dude, and so, like, the all everybody. And so even the wrestlers doing this. So when I see Enzo's show, I'm just like... Anybody, I guess anybody just, I've got a show too. Look, I've got a desk and I've got the mic and everybody and does I've been this. thinking about that a lot lately, how that really yeah. fucks things up as soon as, like not, well, not the, you know, Conrad Thompson shit, but when everybody is doing this shit, no matter what setup they everybody. have. Everybody. It's a Well, you know anybody. what though? You know what though? You do it. I, there's a lot of people who do have mics and do have setups and shit, but they're fucking terrible audio so, quality yeah. and, and video quality. Like, <laughs> Like Conan's podcast, keeping it 100 or whatever, like those guys need to get different mics because they talk so yes, arrogantly. Yes, but I, I disagree. Like, nobody, nobody here, I mean, are just a bunch of marks on the internet think they know everything. It's like, well, at least those marks on the internet know how to get a fucking proper mic that doesn't sound I, like AIDS. I love bro. what you're saying, but here's the funny thing about that. Let me, let me say this, and I hope record this and send it to fucking Conan and Disco. I don't give a fuck. But the fact of the matter is I love those guys. And here's the thing. They're super entertaining, but it is laughable because Disco is always like the fucking stupid marks and blah, blah, blah. Dude, why are you on a video game headset? Like, like, you're, like that po that podcast no, is way too that, good. That's what annoys me about. That's what annoys me but about don't Disco need and Conan. But you don't and, like, need it. Those, that, you don't need those... that. You don't need a professional setup if you're that good. Because I love listening to it, and I don't really care about the quality that much. But what you just said is funny, because it's like they don't know. It's like, do you, why do you have a ten dollar fucking headset? No, they were like, they were like saying that Logan Paul doesn't really isn't that big of a draw or something like isn't that big of a name on youtube or something and like they're they're surprised that he even has that many followers i'm like well at least logan paul put some fucking effort into his video production you guys that just sound like you have made half made asleep in Inferno in one match than disco did in his entire career and well here's the other thing the, too the funny thing about but then this they, is then they backtracked they backtrack on their opinion a lot too if it if a lot of smarks if a lot of, of smarks start to um, oh. agree with them, then they're like, God, why does everybody see that this is a perfect idea? By the way, su su Ramon, surprise, surprise, they, they parted ways with Bill Bahati. That's a real surprise. <laughs> That's a real shocker, isn't you, it? You were on a show with them one time, right? You were yes, on a show I was. with Bill Bahada. And I, and I told K-Dog, I said to them, I go, I, I said to them years, a while ago, I said, how long until this guy's off the show and you guys are in a beef with him? Because that's what's going to happen. Here it is. But also, here's the thing. Listen, I love them. I, I have so much respect for... I love Conan so much. I really do love Conan. Oh, I, I like, like Conan. Disco. I don't like Disco. I, I like them all. I, I, look, I love that Disco's a shithead. I, that's what you need is a character like him. He's great um, on the show. But he is delusional with some things and kind of retarded with some things. I mean, listen, I've got 20-something thousand more subs than them. You know what I mean? And they're, yeah. ma they're, ma they're, and they're, they're making fun of... live viewers. They're making fun of Logan Paul. They're making fun of fucking JD. They're making fun of all these other people, and I've got more subs than them. I mean, that's the funny thing. Well, but and, their and show's also, good. Also, I just honestly, 
you know, it isn't their opinions on wrestling that bothers me. It's the fact that a lot of these older guys that rev- that like do podcasts, they always shit all over the fucking fans. And it's like, dude, you wonder why professional wrestling is dying. You wonder why why people view this shit as gay and don't want to fucking watch anymore. It's because they get this weird stigma that they're a dumb man child, like because you shit on them for buying merchandise or buying shirts or buying a fucking title belt. And you say, oh, you shouldn't be doing that as an as a grown adult. Stop shitting on your own fucking fans and and. If you're going to do that, don't sit there and wonder what's happened in this business. Why does nobody want to watch anymore? Because a lot of their merchandise is not being bought as much as the wrestlers that they're crapping on. Did anybody hear Rostopo exactly. when he first started talking? He went, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> roll, 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 I got to play that. Oh, my God. Like Rostopo. 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 No, you, we heard what I you said, but when you started, we heard what you said, but when you started talking, bro, it was started with you like underwater or something. You got to hear this. You went full, you went full Scooby-Doo. <laughs> Scooby-Doo. Oh God, bro. Well, Scooby Doo now is like you know we hate men and stuff. No, 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 that's Velma. That's Velma. It's completely different. Scooby's not even in the show. Oh. They made a fucking Scooby Doo spinoff show without Scooby Doo at all in the because Scooby, you know, this is our own little spin on it. Yeah, fucking it's our little spin on racism. Thing. Listen to this. Let's let's see if we can hear this. If you're gonna do that. Don't sit there and wonder what's happened in this business. Why does nobody want to watch anymore? Because a lot of their merchandise. <laughs> it sounds like it sounded like he was under. It sounded like he was drowning. Yeah, it sounded like Mustafa was it drowning, like bro. Sonic when he's drowning. That's what it sounds. You know, like. it's funny. You know, it's funny. Speaking of of drowning, that was almost the case last uh, yesterday with me because. My basement was almost flooded with uh with completely flooded because my sister was trying to fix the washer and like one of the nozzles um oh. like I just like broke free and like you know how you're supposed to like turn it like a like a hose and then the yeah. water will shut off well the water wouldn't shut off oh. like it was just stuck and so it kept spraying and spraying Could you turn off and the main literally, line? Dude, I was What about the main line? Yeah, yeah, that's what we ended okay. up at. We didn't know what to do at first. I right. was sick. So she calls, she's like yelling my name. I'm on the, I'm on the couch trying to rest. She's like, fuck, get down here. And I go down there and there's just water like filling up the whole fucking ground. And she goes to find somebody, but she gives me a trash can to put the water in. <laughs> but the, the fucking can has a hole in it. So like the water's still getting everywhere. I'm trying, it get it ends up fucking drenching me. It's like, it was like an everybody loves Raymond episode. I yeah. was like, Deborah. That's like the episode Jonah of uh, Perfect Strangers. The, <laughs> the water comes in the basement, and they get trapped in the basement. And the water's filling up in the basement, or something. Well, uh, what we ended up having to what we ended up having to do was turn off the main water line, mm-hmm. and then we called we after like for thirty minutes trying to scoop up as much water as we could. We ended up calling the um the fire department, and we thought they were gonna just air vac it out. Um, but they were like, oh, no, it's not enough water, but uh, here's some stuff that you could use to fix the shit <laughs> or to fix. Yeah, they ended up they ended up finding a solution. So we'd have water. They shut off our our um our water heater. But at least now we can still like use the bathroom and shit like that. Yeah. Uh, Just bypass and then it. eventually we had to, eventually my uncle dropped off a um a uh, air vac or whatever shock vac, whatever the hell it's called. Wet and you. We ended up, yeah, after like 30, 40 trips of just like sucking up water and putting it in a bucket a and then throwing it outside. Oh, no, you need a pump. We finally got this fucking basement done. Get a pump for your basement because even if just if that ever, ha- anything ever happens, you need a pump. You know, I was showing my kid, this is all the things I've learned since really getting a home because I'm like, no one's coming to save me. This is on me. This how something happens on me. Like I've got to take care of everything. I show my I've shown Gavin like seven times where the water shut off is. I'm like, dude, anything ever happens? And it's right there. I can see it from here. And I'm like, come over here. It's right here. You turn it, blah, blah. And I'm showing him how the pipes work because he doesn't know anything. You know what I mean? So I'm like, the pipe, when you turn it this way, diagonal from the pipe, it's like it's closed, right? But when it's running equal to the pipe, it's open. Get it like open, here, closed. And I'm going over everything. And yeah, it's crazy, bro. Until stuff breaks, if you don't know what to do, it's like, what the fuck do we do? Like wait 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 yeah and then um and my sister was like practically crying she's like I didn't 
what just happened? She was like having such a nervous breakdown. Like the fire guy was like, the fire department guy's like, um, can you shut her up? It's gonna be okay. You should just calm down. <laughs> calm yeah. the hell down, yo. Yeah, I just saw a kid get yeah, run I was like, over. I told her, I was like, face. why don't you go smoke a cigarette? Calm down. <laughs> I just saw a kid with his head ripped off on the highway. Like, yeah, this is nothing. You'll be all right. What the fuck? <laughs> Did you? <laughs> no, I mean, like, you know, firemen, you know, they be the lab Jimmy, well, you're talking about the fire department guy. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Rustafa, Rustafa, yeah, just... get out get out of the water, Rustafa. That is unbelievable how that sounds. Oh, God. You know, do, do, slow that, do that in slow motion. Slow it down. Slow it down. Hmm, let's see. Uh... Here, here's how it sounds when he says at any rate. <laughs> What does it sound like? <laughs> so it really does. <laughs> like you can't even make it out what you're saying. That sounds like a fucking um a rancor from Star Wars. <laughs> that is the most random reference of this. Uh, like wow. like when it's like when it's just low grumbling. You know what? When I complain to Discord on Twitter later, this is what I'm going to say. I'm like, yeah. you think it's okay that when sometimes people are speaking, this happens all the time? <laughs> Just letting you know, Discord, you know, it's a little bit of a problem. <laughs> oh, you sound like a Murgle. You sound like a Murgle. A Murloc. You sound like a Murloc. That's fucking hilarious. Wait a minute, let's compare. But you know what's funny? It's actually Rostafa saying something horribly offensive, and he was disguising it. That's right. Yeah, Jews. How close is this? Listen. Yeah, I hate Jews. Yeah, I hate. I hate. Yeah, I think he said that. You're right. <laughs> I love everybody. Everybody equally now. Um, Hitler. He said Hitler was right. I. Oh <laughs> my God! You are an idiot. You play it again. Play it again. <laughs> Hitler was right. That's kind of weird. I, it's kind of weird for like a, I heard a black I'll, guy to say something like that. I heard I'll reasons. rape Judge Judy. That's what I heard. Oh. And who? She's Jewish. Oh wow! Now you know why, Luke. You're scaring me. I knew it. I heard Jews. Yep. See. Why would you say that, Rostov? Oh, Rostov thinks again. he can because he's Jenny black. Hitler. He can, all I can do anything because I'm black. Hitler. That's what it is. You realize I've actually have Jewish ancestry in my family, right? So you See, know how stupid this is sound, just, right? just, just stop it. Add oh. it all. Oh, I'm, what are you, Native American too? Fuck off. Yeah, I actually, yeah. You're fucking catch in your fucking... Oh, my oh boy. God. I'm going to throw What him. Jewish what side are dies? you from? What Gene name? How is how is there any such thing as a Jewish black guy? I thought that was like in comedy are movies. Are you kidding me, Luke? Are you that wow. stupid, dude? Oh, shit. Now, I'm not talking about. I'm not talking about. I'm not talking about the Jewish like, <laughs> like, you know, like some from I'm some other really, country. I love you, I'm not talking from like the guys of another country where they're like, hold on. I'm talking about like actual like African American guys who were who are Jewish. Jewish. I don't. Didn't he die for good reason? No. Oh. Yeah, Rostafa, you're not real. Just get on with just oh, Rostafa, right get on with your stupid fucking review. Because I know you probably <laughs> Yeah, Rostafa, continue. Go ahead. <laughs> Yo, yeah, I'm about to say, dude, you never heard of Sammy Davis Jr., bro? He was Jewish. Black man. Yeah, and I'm an African American. Yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> Keep lying. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't you say that you're a part black, Joey, from your ancestry report? That's true. I am of Gordon ancestry. I'm a point zero one. Viking. Yes, I'm more Viking for sure. Seven percent Scandinavian. Did you hear that? He says he wish he wasn't black. No, I wish I wasn't black. No. <laughs> Slavery should come back. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There was a ton of black Jews in the 1940s, but they weren't alive afterwards. Go, okay, let's go to the next thing. <laughs> Rostafa, go ahead. Charcoal. I mean, go ahead. I I don't even know how I can get it. All right. So let's talk. Let's talk about this baby because obviously <laughs> nobody nobody gives it a crap. 
<laughs> what is wrong with everybody, dude? Damn, get it together. Uh, dude, what's wrong I'm with everybody, dude? The black half of you tried to smoke, you know, tried to like home invade the white half, and you sounded more gross. That's the ship kind of got us. Yeah. <laughs> It'll be okay. I'm gonna leave this bad case, right? <laughs> Making her second appearance tonight, it's the sexy Allison Tuckwa. I'm gonna leave this briefcase. Allison loves me. Son, run, run, you fat bitch. Run, 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 you fat bitch. Run, 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 you fat bitch. Run, 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 you fat bitch. I hope you run, you fucking. You big bitch, you gotta run, I got the itch, got my dick, bitch. Uh. There is no Lift Smackdown this coming Friday, it's just a rerun. Really? What? What? I knew (laughs) you'd come! Is that true? because they're in Saudi Arabia. Oh. I already already watched a lot of the taped Smackdown from a from audience footage um it's so stupid uh really? obviously it's a troll but somebody <laughs> was in the chat named allison Um, oh my god, what's hard <laughs> Joe, if you if you and Leah ever decide to like bring another woman into the bedroom, I think Allison mm. Tuckwab has earned that honor. I will I'm have to yes. I've already com- had a conversation with Leah. I was like, listen, if we could you know, would you be open to jumping in there with us? And she was like I don't know. For, what the what? fuck? I don't know. That may have been muted. Um, no, so I was like, listen, me, you, and, and she was like, yeah, I don't think so. And I was like, well, what about Himmelfarb? Like, I heard Himmel God would come back if you get, you know, sucky, sucky, you know? And she was like, get the fuck out of here. And I was like, okay. So I, I think she'd have she would to be say drunk. J- she would say JB or Keish. No, we'll get her drunk. We'll get Leah drunk and, you know, we'll have some fun. That's you know, the only. That's the only per, uh, people that I would see her being like, okay, fine, you're because right. it's like you two. Probably I true. guess it's like the most. Yes. History she has of all of them. A little bit of tuck. You guys are also like. You guys are also like strangely like a, a lot alike. Yeah, so I think. Like uh, weird. Yeah, I think that she would go. I think me and JB could bang out our our, our wives together. Yeah. I think that could but then you'd be like, but I feel like Joe, like he would be like. Not getting enough attention, he was just like, "Hey, what about me, guys?" They kick him away. <laughs> no, no, that no. If if I felt like I wasn't getting enough attention, I would I would then take over, you know, his wife. I'd dominate her or something, and I'd look at him with like a crazy fucking face, like I just like while I'm, eating while eating my own shit. I'd be <laughs> like, just to show, like no, you know, like like imagine yeah. while you're doing this, like this, this like hot and sweaty, like fucking sex party, whatever. You're still eating like raisin bran the whole oh, time, yeah. like from the box. You're just taking oh, yeah. munches of raisin bran. I'd shove raisin. Br- I'd shove raisins in her ass, and then I'd bite her. I'd bite my own dick off. It'd be. I'd just be. I'd just be an insane maniac. Is what I would be if that happened. Um. Anyway, <laughs> take a shit in her cereal. Thank you, Allison Takwa. I really appreciate. It. I'm gonna leave this. Oh, here we're gonna do it again. Right. We're gonna do it again. Oh my I'm gonna god. Leave this it's Allison. Out. I'm gonna leave this briefcase right here. I'm gonna leave this briefcase right here. Uh-huh. The talk of Wob is here. Son, Allison run, has a nice. Run, you fat bitch. Run, yeah. run, you fat bitch. <laughs> run, 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 you fat bitch. Allison. Run, run, run you fat bitch. Gotta took that Wob away. Yo, run, gotta took that Wob away. At Target, your kids can tuck their dick away. Don't you think? Hasala mahala. Run you fat bitch. today. Never run so hot in all your damn life. Three tracks today. Uh, run, run you fat 
Audio Jungle. That woman needs to go back to wrestling school. She could have killed Sasha. Any other women superstars, I wouldn't Whoa. trust her wrestling. Find no. a different appointment. Of, Shots no. fired well, at Willow. That's what they said. A Sorry. No, I just she shots fired at Willow Nightingale. That's it. Hey, that's hey, maybe That's what they fucking She got paid off by um uh by Paige to do it. <laughs> yeah, no, that's what I, I'm I, saying. I, that's what they said about that's what they said about uh Sasha when she injured Paige, remember? That this yep. bitch injury page. Yeah, yep. <laughs> injury page this, or whatever. This bitch injury page, injury page. No, 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 but here's here's the thing. Basically, from what I from what I read and what I, what I saw on the tape, basically she injured herself, or like it was just an inadvertent like way of like you know you thinking like you know her opponent actually. She injured. fell off no, the top rope. She fucking fell off the top rope. It didn't really have anything to do with Willow, really. Yeah, exactly. So like, <laughs> stupid. Man. What the hell you is that? Get him going against the Willow. Willow, when you're beating oh, yeah, the living but, yeah, hell out I of need Willow, to talk about that. Oh, I need God. to talk about that because, like, you know, the, the funny thing. What do you want to talk about? Pay per view tomorrow, by the way. Yeah, you know, and, a, and apparently that's like going to be her first pay per view match with them. But I'm like, come on, guys. Like, honestly, I'm not taking this as any serious as anybody who's not even watching Impact on a regular basis, dude. There's a hundred. There's a hundred. There might be a hundred thousand people that watch Impact. And Probably guess and, and, and guess what? There's like three hundred thousand people that watch New Japan and all that stuff. Really, not even. World, are you talking worldwide? No, in America. Oh, just in America. Oh, yeah, okay. I mean worldwide. I mean, I mean, how many people yeah. in Japan? How many people in Japan watch New Japan? Is it more than WWE? I'm um, legitimately curious. Like I, yeah, I'd be legitimately curious actually as well. Well, there's no such thing as legitimately curious, mm -hmm. right? Okay, That's so I, I can tell you right now, New, New Japan has announced 92,000 unique worldwide users watched uh, the Wednesday event from the Tokyo Dome, uh, around 28,000 coming from outside the, the country. So that's going back to Wrestle Kingdom 17. So that is... Not a lot. It's a lot. It's kind of so they have like, I don't know, bro. Like half a million, like five hundred thousand viewers. Yeah, I'm gonna say I'm gonna say for a record, like maybe four hundred <laughs> to five hundred thousand worldwide, as far as like who actually watched the brand. Okay, wait a minute. According to data from the Japanese Video Research Institute, an estimated twenty-two million people in Japan watched at least one New Japan event in 2019. So that's more. That's a lot, I guess. Like I, it's hard to. But again, no. That, wait, I'm talking wait, more what? on a worldwide How basis. Many? I mean, it, it says 22 million people at one point watched in 2019 in Japan. How many people are in lot. Japan? That has to be a lot. That can't be real. Jesus. What is that? Jesus. You know what? Who's that? Who is that? Who the fuck is that? I'm sorry, buddy, but. Who is that? Please stop that. I can't tell who it is. If it's Pico or John, it ain't me, bro. Sorry. It ain't John. He's oh, it's John. John <laughs> it ain't me. It ain't me. is like, oh, it is. <laughs> well, I don't know. I don't know where that was right. coming from. Yeah, that doesn't make that doesn't I make any it, sense. If, if there was, if there was eighteen million or seventeen million, wherever the hell that stat was, watching. I mean, that would be like the biggest wrestling company in the whole world. Regardless of where they are. Okay, so, so they a, they have a, a total. <clears throat> in 2018, they had 50,000 um, subscribers. No, the way that they put that was that 22 million in that year had seen a you know a fucking event, which is like I don't know how many events they have, not including you know the pay per views and whatever else they put out there. That means I mean live on TV and pay per views all added up. Because then you could like break that down, and maybe it's I don't know how many shows they do. And but then they, also they you have to include their, their their um their their streaming service too. I mean, again, that's a whole other thing entirely. But still, though, it's like even with their streams and how many subscribers they have on that can also you know raise some eyebrows. Um, I mean, who doesn't who doesn't want to watch fifty five hard knee shots in somebody's face that they don't sell? I mean, that's just 
quality. <laughs> well, again, the, the Japanese style is based around like how not only how tough you are, but more so how long can you last and can you fire back and make a comeback? And how and little the, can you sell? And how little can you how sell? And WWE has always for years have been about bumping and feeding. And telling a story that way and keeping the matches, yes. Dude, why do you gotta for, make? Why you do know. you gotta make ours sound gay, but theirs sound like you know bumping, feeding, and theirs is like, oh yeah, survival and endurance, like you know what well, it, it is. is dude, dude, they're not dude, selling any of the moves. Crap the out of each other. Have you not? When was the last time you watched an NJPW match? Why don't you it watch UFC? I, I, think, I think I watched something that was like that, where two guys gave each other fucking, you know, head splitting fucking headaches. With if like it's all about being non-stop. tough, watch watch UFC. If it's all about being tough, because they're really hitting each other. Well, I mean, yeah, yeah, they're, they're like actually doing. It. If I wanted that type of shit, like the reason I'm not saying, hey, let's be safer in there. Like, oh, hold on one second. Hold on one second. Motherfucking, what the fucking wow, Mr. Pico's got to be muted for a few. Oh, yeah, he's gone. Oh, shit. Thank you. Sorry, John. <laughs> Mr. Pico is a mess. I don't know what happened to him. The aliens are trying to take him. Good luck. Yeah, I don't mind, you know, being aggressive <laughs> in there and, like, you know, laying into each other with some strikes. But when it's, like, nonstop and you're just not selling the moves, why would oh. I be invested? Um, right. Uh... Right. And they also always do this spot where someone goes for the German, but the mm. guy counters and goes for another German. But this guy counters and goes for his German, and then eventually they hit it, and then he tries to hit another German, but the guy counters and hits him with a German. You would, Man, you would I can't believe we have- hate, uh, uh, Sorry, then you would obviously hate Will Ospreay and Ibushi pretty, pretty much every match because that's all they do. <laughs> I, I hate that shit. It's okay. It's okay every once in a while. But when a lot of these matches, they feel like they have the need to do all. We got to do the German spot. We got to do the fake out tombstone spot. It's just like it doesn't. It doesn't make it feel natural anymore. It's just like oh well, we got to do the big spots that everybody likes because that's the spot that you have to do. And apparently, that's why every match is thirty five minutes long. Great, and that's not true either. It's telling a story, and again, that's why another reason why again I actually want more selling because again, it's more compelling that way because I believe that this guy is hurt, especially for the comeback. You know, uh, what, what's the, what's the, uh, the the reference that uh, one of the Hall of Famers once said? It's it's basically you know shine. Uh, sign, heat, sell, or come back, or whatever, or whatever the, the the slogan was, was basically that's the way you tell the story in the ring. That's why you know, it fucking just aggravates me to no end when like some smarky channel goes like top ten matches of all time or the past decade, and instead of listing matches like you know that people actually know, it's always like. This was Chiga Tukusi versus Kakako Kanaki in a big fucking fight. And it's just like nobody knows what that match is. And then you go watch it, and it's just uh, one of these but then fucking then that's, no-selling that's the highlight reels. You have to, and then you they have go to on about how it's a uh, – yeah. And then they go on about how this was a brilliant story that was built up. A absolutely brilliant story built up between these t- – Is was it really brilliant – Two fucking promo segments that they did on fucking post match uh, conferences. Brilliant build up. Yes. Again, I can't speak for every match that that was ever happened in the country of Japan, but yeah, there have definitely been storylines uh, that were actually uniquely done that you didn't necessarily have to press conferences. Hey, it's our old friend, Broken Lion 69. Oh, yeah. He became a oh, member God. again, man. He's uh, 36 months in a row as a member. Thank you, Broken Lion. Damn. OG. I OG. got a member. Oh, I got a member for you, brother. Um, oh, real quick. Hey, guys, I got a, I got a new like thing. I got a new thing you have in your mind. I'm talking like a prince now. So that- <laughs> you, you got a what? John, go ahead. I got a new, I got a new Japan clip uh, uploaded on Discord right now in the chat. All right, let's check it out. It's a clip? No, I'm just kidding. Um, a 13-second clip. Let's see. Is, that, is this Will Osprey, by the way? No. 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 Is this uh? 2017. Uh, is this Okada or somebody? I can't tell. Shibata, Kashiori Shibata. You know what's okay. funny about you know what's funny about Japanese commentators? What it's a the slap. same type of passion they'd put. 
He almost this is the same type the of passion skin. they would put into a Wii Sports tournament. <laughs> Unbelievable <laughs> tournament around this! Ripcord! Oh my god, what a chop! And you want to talk about fucking selling? <laughs> what was that? What was that? You would do about really talking? well doing uh, Japanese commentary, Joe, actually. You would actually be pretty good Look at, at this, it. Even if not, not actually speaking in Japanese, but just the English side of it. He's he almost do worn down he do now, and now a ripcord! What a chop right across the chest! And he dropped to a knee! All the exhaustion! The energy! Collapsing in the center of the ring, you can see. Look at the look on his face. He wants to have sex with him. No, I'm just kidding. You should uh, do a New Japan commentary, Joe. Yeah, that would be great. They should have hired. Look at Jungle Boy. He's like, man, he looks like his dad. It's so crazy. He looks so much like Luke Perry. I watched Buffy the movie, the old movie from the early '90s the other day, thinking about how Luke Perry just like they look so alike. Obviously, father and son. Crazy. And you know, you could yeah, you could tell by the detail in that clip that I showed y'all. You know, you know, Okada was selling. Oh yeah. yeah, I I honestly couldn't see the clip because Joe doesn't have his video on in Discord. Well, remember, remember, Maybe Okada not. also wrestled a lot in the states right before he went back to Japan to like you know really work on his craft. So he understood the art of selling and why selling is important. And there's only very few of those top guys in Japan that actually understand the art of selling and why it's important to sell. Mm -hmm. Everybody else would want to do high spots. Yeah, I would love calling New Japan because I do like that sort of stuff. Like I would be so into that. Like, but yeah, as a fan, I'm like, I think you know what. And part of it could be that I've reached a point where I've just seen everything in wrestling over and over again so much that my, I, I do think that I enjoy wrestling more when I'm involved in it now because I'm just too, like, yeah. I've watched it for too long. I need to be involved in it. You know, I need to be involved in it. Way too long. Here's the thing. I want to get involved in it because I need money. And that's the most <laughs> important thing to me. <laughs> that's hey, why I like <laughs> <laughs> Do you know why Epstein's yeah, no, Island I, I was get you. so I feel well it Because done? it's hard for me. I have Peacock. You know, I have all the, this, like, endless database of fucking professional wrestling that I could go through any time. And I feel like more often than not, I'm like, eh, I don't want to. Like even pay-per-views that I do like, I'm just like, I don't feel like watching it over again. Maybe there's one or two matches I'd like to watch, but I don't feel like it, you know? Yeah, and it's, you and it's to watch like the archives. That's mainly what we, especially for, you know, people that have watched for a long time, they all just want to see are just archive matches or references to matches that somebody might have said that you've never seen before. You know, yeah, that's like, the whole I like when they, they, I like when they have matches already, like, you know, in those big match clip shows or whatever that they put on, um, you know, like best of WWE or something. That's easy for me to digest because I don't have to go looking for a specific pay-per-view and then fast forward all the way to that point of the match. I like when it's all there for me. That's why I love buying wrestling DVDs. Um, you, and so, yeah. The round table, Joe? Do you remember the round table that they used to have on WWE On Demand? It was like... Gene Okerlund and like Jim Ross and Taz and Michael Hayes and like those guys, they would talk about like certain times in like the business, like the territories or different types of they, heels. Or different yeah, types it was of some kind of like would, backstage show that they did um, before. The they network. do it now called Table for Free. It was before that, though. It was like a weird like it was almost like an ESPN style show where they talked yeah. about stuff. Yeah. 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 It was like called yeah, something. Yeah, yeah. Where Flair would be on there, yeah. Piper would be on there, and they would always talk about like certain eras of the business, and they would even show like a lot of the old archival footage from the territories, which never been really released up until the point of uh, when they were aired on TV. And I mean, now you can like pretty much go back on demand and watch it on Peacock and here and there, but it's like I like the little clip where you just didn't show everything, but just snippets here and there because it made you want to watch it or anticipate it. I yeah, because really, really go back and try to watch like a fucking full wrestling show from 1983, and it's it's a nightmare. Like I want to kill myself. Yeah, and, you know, until until, until Ric yeah. Flair shows up and cuts an awesome promo or something. That's more of the late 80s. Oh yes, but WWE yeah, so, Conf Confidential is what it was called. Yep, that's right. Yeah, Confidential. But, but yeah, when 
you you would stick around. You would watch a three or four minute promo from Ric Flair. You're not gonna watch Billy Bob fucking Johnson go against the fucking the Spun Spunsley brothers or some shit in a fucking uh, fifteen minute fucking piece of shit match that nobody cares about. Like a lot of the shit that they have from like those old archive wrestling stuff on Peacock is just filler. Like nobody besides Jim Cornette is going to go back and watch a full 80s show. Yeah. Okay. Um, I, I do. I, I'm trying to, so re, like, it's like WrestleMania one, you know, you put on WrestleMania one, like halfway through the Tito Santana match, <laughs> you're like, okay, but then it's over. But then the rest of it, you're like, Jesus, I can't deal with this anymore because it's missing. Uh, and I, what? Oh, and I, okay. You can, I thought you called me a Yenta. I was like, what was that? I hope you fuck yourself. Jesus <laughs> Christ. All right. Calm down. You donated oh, 50 shit. bucks. Oh. I'm going to take my dick out because you donated oh. 50 bucks. You life. donated 50 bucks, motherfucker. Boy, I'm a rich motherfucker. Evening, Joe. Sorry, I haven't been around a lot lately. Been working a bunch. Mm. Well, after Florida eliminated Carolina tonight, they're going to die versus Vegas. No. Go Vegas, baby. All right, D. Welsh is now on the Vegas train. I got to be honest, D. I'm, and thank you, by the way, for the donation, D. Welsh. D. Welsh is here. Everybody's fucking here tonight. Let me tell you something. I, I, I hope, I, want, I actually want the Panthers to win the cup because you know what? If they beat the Bruins and beat all these other people and they win the cup, it's like, okay, we lost to the team that won the cup. But if the Bruins lost to Florida, and then Florida just got eliminated right away, it would be like, wow, we fucked up bad. We didn't fuck up. This team's nuts. So, I don't know, bro. Vegas oh, by, Vegas, oh, by, Vegas oh, loses way, Joe, again in the, the fucking finals. Yes, Mustafa. Sorry for interrupting. I just sent you the uh, the clips that I was referencing from the, uh, the on-demand service in the uh, in the message board. What is it? What is it? What is it? It was just, a, it was just the, cl the clips I was mentioning from uh, the On Demand oh, show yeah. with uh, Gene Okerlund and like those oh, guys, yeah, yeah. and they were like sitting. Yeah, yeah, I remember watching this. I, 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 I enjoyed this. I want to say it was. What year did this come out? Like two thousand eight. Like late, yeah, two thousand seven or eight. Yeah, yeah, it was late two thousands. Yeah. Barry Windham. Yeah, I remember. I used furry, to watch furry balls plopped menacingly on the table. Great name, by the way. Um, <laughs> Says this in the chat. I went through something similar this uh, this morning, or whatever. Watching WrestleMania three from start to finish. It was four or five straight matches with the fucking dumbest endings he's ever seen. He says it was gut wrenching. <laughs> yeah, there's see, and there's a lot of, and I think some of that needs to come back. Some like variable things, but yeah, back then, dude, there were so many matches where like somebody's foot was under a rope and they got disqualified for something that you didn't even know what they did uh, or like, you know, no, yeah, like, count like they're just getting like, they're just getting out of the feeling out process. And like a guy hits an elbow and one, two, three, like, yes. we, the match is over. What? Honestly, <laughs> yeah. Honestly. And the guy, but the, the guy that they just pinned is like back up on his feet and he's all confused looking. It's like, why did, why did you even do that ending? Eight minute time limit I mean, match. WrestleMania six. I watched WrestleMania six recently, <laughs> like again because I hadn't watched it in a long time. Dude, it was a chore to get through because again there were certain matches that I actually did like, but it felt so long just to get yeah. to the main event. You're like basically in WrestleMania six. I don't even remember all the matches now. How on that particular WrestleMania, but it's sort of like okay, like. There might be a Rockers match. That's good. Rick Rude has a match. Macho Man. Jason Snake Roberts versus Ted DiBiosity. Yeah. DiBiosity. DiBiosity. Diabesity. Ron saying well, his, disingenuous. Is real anyway, so doesn't matter, I'm not really. going to have any problem being Ron sanctimonious, disingenuous. <laughs> <laughs> anti establishing Vagina. I had a virus. cat named Vagina. Oh, the Ron, Ron Vagina. Everything that's, that Ron's that's ever done. That's the name done. of JD's cat. Vagina. Ron Vagina. <laughs> Ron Vagina. That's Western the name. Westerns. He names his cat after things he can't have unless he takes them against the will of a female. and schnutzel and schnucks. Schnucks. <laughs> I... <laughs> 
we're going to build the most perfect wall ever. It would have been done, but we we they stole it from us. Or I would have had a perfect and wall. I've met vagina. Yeah. I've met vagina. Oh, no. Great cat. Greatest cat I've ever met. Great vagina. Great Here's pussy. Here's the thing. I'm so not racist. Like the the liberal the left wing people say I'm racist. They used to love me. They loved me before I ran. They know they who I am. They love me. But the bottom line is, for every Cinco de Mayo, I would throw a taco parade. I could I could basically say the N word right now, and I would still be loved because people know that I'm not racist. Like they say I am. It's a lie. It's most have, of what they say is a lie. I, I'm the least racist person in the world. I have plenty of my black workers and co-workers who say, who say, oh, you're great. <laughs> Well, they're not really co-workers. They work for me. But, you know, it's all about equality nowadays. I call them losers. But here's the thing. Back in the day, when I was in WWE briefly. I call them servant people. I banged China. All right. Backstage, I had sex with Joni Lowry. It was amazing. Um, It was like having sex, I believe, with like a male, if I could say. So I I am in favor of gay pride. Dominated. It's the first time. It's the first time I had sex and it actually hurt. Like it hurt <laughs> to just slip my cock between <laughs> between the lips. Wow. I I did. I wasn't sure. It if felt it was like I was ass. shoving. It felt like I was shoving my dick into an electrical outlet. It, <laughs> it was very painful. Shocking, oh bro. And you can back up on it. <laughs> <laughs> I when I backed up on it, it felt like backing up on a road spike. It hurt a lot. I oh, just my fucker. <laughs> Mr. Trump, my... what do you think about Ryback? I just my fucker. Ryback, great man, great person, met him. He has tremendous. <laughs> no, he has a tremendous pair of hands. When did Trump go Not Spanish? Said. Yeah. That was Jesus. That's amazing. That's pretty good. Luke's got the Trump down again. Yeah. Mr. Trump, well, you know, you I can get like right there's back. certain parts of him where he sounds like my grandma. Like he'll be talking. Like I remember hearing him say something about Mike Tyson, and I was just like, I always that's like Mike everything Tyson he says about somebody. Man. Yeah, he's always talking about somebody who like because he was talking about uh, Tyson after he got accused of the rape or whatever. He's like Mike Tyson. I've met him. Great person, great athlete, and it's just it's really despicable. How the media turned against this man. <laughs> I mean, I just I just don't think I think we should do an investigation. <laughs> Mr. Trump, would you fuck right back in the ass for two thousand dollars? I really think the, the uh, to be here on Mr. Trump's podcast, it's great to be here. Listen, I fuck everybody that doesn't <laughs> like him. I'll kill them. I'll eat their fucking assholes. If you ki- if you got kids, I'll kill your kids in front of your family. I'll sell the Confederate oh, flag up I'm your watching. faggot asses. I don't give a shit. Oh. Mike Tyson, motherfucker. You cracker ass motherfuckers on the left wing trying to tell black people what to do, trying to use us. You ain't going to use Mike Tyson no more, you fucking, you fucking albino bunny motherfuckers. Fuck yourself. <laughs> I stand by on everything that man said. Great speech from a great man. You know, the thing that me and Mike get along so well with is our absolute hatred for PC culture. You know, he didn't mind it. He was against it when he raped that girl. I was against it when I grabbed him by the pussy. That's right. I never raped anybody. This this day, this white bitch reporter was trying to get have sex with me, and she was upset that I wouldn't have sex with her. So I said to her, I said, man, why are you so mean to me? And she's like, well, I want you to stick your black dick in me, baby. And I was like, man, she's trying to fuck with me because I won't sleep with her. So I told you, listen, you fucking cunt, I'll kill you. I'll kill you, motherfucker. At the time, OJ just got away with killing a white bitch. I was like, oh, I can get away with it. I remember that. Fucking- I remember <laughs> Right, the lesbian, she great, must have been a great fucking, justice. Her husband's dick must have been like the size of an acorn or something. Blessings on blessings. Blessings on blessings. Here's my next, here's my next friend. He's a great friend of mine, Stephen German. Brilliant man. Oh, <laughs> fuck. <laughs> <laughs> You suck the whole ball, fa. You two sucking dicks together, fuckers. Listen, I know this is your podcast, Mr. Trump, but somebody in the chat, some motherfucker, faggot ass motherfucker in the chat, just asked me if I would sing the the song because I know it's your podcast. Is it okay if I would you sing 
single banner, I'll Mr. Mike Tyson. Here you go. Because someone in the, oh. in the chat just asked me to do it. Check this oh, out. We're getting a live song oh. and performance oh. from the That's former the undisputed heavyweight no champion heaven. of the world. It isn't if you try. My God. No Beautiful. hell below us. Oh my God. Above us only sky. Fuck. No more lip. Imagine all the fucking people. I'm getting emotional. I'm pretty good. I'm pretty good at this. There's no religion to imagine if I killed Nancy Pelosi and I punched her right. Making some ass. great points. I'm making really good points. Yeah, I'm not the only one. I'm I not hope really. someday you'll join me. And we can all elect Donald Trump. This wow. is one of my favorite songs I've ever heard. That's Even though it is... A cover of a bleeding heart liberal. That's right. Uh, you know, actually, to be honest, let's be let's be honest, uh, Mister. If if John Lennon was alive now, they would have called him a Republican. Oh, exactly. You yeah. know, at one at one time or another, people used to say I was a liberal, <laughs> and you know, I used to agree with that sentiment. <laughs> Man, I'll tell you what. If TSS, <laughs> if TSS was doing a top 10 this year, that would have been on it, I think. Um, Maybe top 20. Oh. What? We've had a lot of great moments Calm this down. year with just voice impersonations. Calm down. I'm you, about to say, we've had some better moments than that. Your black Jewish ass. Calm down. I'm sorry. Oh, I am. I'm sorry. I'm you know what? Definitely bum. would be on the list. Send oh. you funny Trump jab to his <laughs> post on Twitter. Yeah, Rostafa would be on a list. Um, Alex no, Oli. but you know what that? Thank you. You know who would definitely be on like a, or what moment would definitely be on a top ten if TSS was still doing it was um, either the int the first episode that Nerdy was on, or the one where like he said actually you know what every shirt a show that Dork Knight was on yeah right. that's what I meant yeah, to say Dork not Knight. Nerdy every yeah. show that Dork Knight has been on yeah. has been absolute just. Comedy, you know, goal. comedy goal. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. And n by no, yeah, by absolute no intention of his own. Like those, he legitimately, the, like, I don't think he means to say these things. That one, dude, that one-two punch of him saying first that he that his daughter was hot, and then the next week saying his other daughter was an <laughs> ugly linebacker. Like, I mean, that is no. that shit was well, wild. Dude, just, or just like the fact that like. Every stream that I was on with him, I would just get like the end of the night. I was just so fed up with him that I just me and him would be arguing with each other. <laughs> and then that whole mankind thing with the fucking mask. Mm. That, oh, was that was gold. That was great. That was a good one. I had no mercy when I skull fucked her. I would definitely be in the top three. Oh my god! Yeah, we got. I told him he was gonna come on the other night, and I just was like so retarded that I didn't. Oh my god! Hey Joe, can we can we run down um, the uh, AEW uh, Double or Nothing card if you don't mind? Oh, HZ Jake says that Dork was on Gargut's show yesterday, and that he said his wife left him. Yeah, we knew that. Wow. Dude. He, dude, three wives <laughs> have left him. Left That's true. We talked about that on the show. Three wives have left him. What, what do you oh, call her? A fucking? Would you call her a lumberjack or something? Linebacker. You know, you kind of look like a construction worker. You know. Okay. I'm sorry. I'm telling Joey Janelle that he's a back down. 
Coward. He, he really is. He really is a hey, back Joe, down coward. the fucking building like Owen Hart did. Oh, bad boy Janela said Jim Cornette's at least entertaining. Is someone talking about Jim? Wait, what'd you say? He said the fall, fall to his death like Owen Hart. Ooh. Not knowing that it was just a couple days ago where he just celebrated Owen Hart's uh, passings. We didn't. Yeah. Well, they didn't celebrate. Did you celebrate his death? Did you celebrate. have a fucking party? Yeah, that's weird. Like, I'm glad he felt. There are people. There are. There, honestly, God, there were some sick people on the internet. You'd be surprised what they write. Rosafa had a cake that was like designed yeah. like the um, ring that he what fell the hell in is that the blood to stain be? and everything. What wow, did you, what did you, you have a cake? Horrible, why are you celebrating Owen Hart's death, Rostafa? What did you eat a cake? It's very bizarre. Okay, Jesse the Body Ventura, that is a lie, and you know it. You're a politician. It's not Jesse the it's Body anymore. Lie. It's <laughs> the mind. It's, it's not a the lie. mind, you Ventura. Just, because unlike it. you, I use my brain. <laughs> and I know that the only reason why Owen Hart took that stupid stunt that got him killed was to make money. <laughs> Oh. Jesse, Jesse, get a blood transfusion. You need more blood to pump into your to your skull, bro. Maybe you should get a semen transfusion directly into your mouth. You fucking <laughs> stupid queer. Let me ask you a question. Let me ask you a question. Are you Don't sing a theory, whatever did actually happen to your lost penis? Uh, you know what? I'm sure you have the answer on one of your gay show tunes. You know, back in <laughs> Vietnam, and we found out that one of the privates liked to dance like a show tune right. character, <laughs> we would beat the shit out of him. <laughs> and then yeah, we would rape him. The movie, uh, what you call it? Um, we Are the Titans. Well, unfortunately, you talk about me being sweetness. I think actually, no, maybe you might have been actually sunny. And uh, maybe uh, you like to bend over from a time or two and get a whistle while you worked. Why do you choose to speak in riddles? What are you, the fucking Riddler? <laughs> I speak clearly <laughs> and factually. You speak clearly now that the rain is gone? You see no more. What are you even again. talking about? There he goes again. Why don't you get? Why don't you go get an umbrella for the cum rain? <laughs> what the hell is that? Whoa! What does that even mean? <laughs> you would know what it means, don't you, choir boy? <laughs> you can't always get what you want. There he goes again. Look, he's singing it again. That's all this guy knows how to do is sing. That's why this country actually. Why America? Because I'm not in this country anymore. That's why America's falling apart. Because you got guys talking shit who the only thing they know how to do is break into dance. Mm. Yeah, I, I mean, any point he could break out into some musical at some point here. You step in the ring with me and I'll show you how I dance with left and rights. <laughs> so, so for the rest of the body, I'm assuming that you have a case of footloose. You just don't like to dance. I don't I don't know why you keep bringing up one of these gay musicals that you love. I'm just talking facts. And the fact of the matter is, my name's not Jesse the Body Ventura. It's Jesse the Mind. Jesse the Mind? You, you sure about that? You sure you didn't uh, end up getting that when you Jesse were in a gay club? Jesse the Mind Ventura. I was a former governor. What were I you? I you were a Navy SEAL. What were you besides a current homo? <laughs> Where is this even going? Oh, my God. I love it. You I, would like to know, wouldn't you? I, Straight to your asshole. I feel like I, I coached this. Why out. do I feel like this version of Jesse would have actually been like a, uh, a pedophile in some I point? Hope you in like some... <laughs> fuck yourself. You love talking about pedophilia. You do. You won't even admit which sex you love, but you knew. Now I know that you like children. Ooh. Oh God! Oh, wait a minute. You you actually like children, Governor? You you yourself are admitting right now that you love children? That's not what I said, child uh -huh. lover. Child lover. Child, child liver. Child lover. <laughs> Stumbling your words there, Jesse. You sure you're not there? Uh, 
You know, you're drunk on one of those uh, Malibu drinks that you like so much, huh? You you know, it's hard, it's hard not to stutter. It's hard not to stutter when I have so many brilliant thoughts running through my mind that I want to say them all at once. Unlike you, where the only thing you have running through your mind is a picture of a black man's cock. Money and saving my money, like a nice little, uh, like a nice little. Dream. Oh, Bam. here we go. Here's what this guy's only concerned about with is money. It's all about <laughs> the money, of course. All about the money, there. All about the money. Money. Well, what about what about love? Huh? What about the real human connection? Do you give a damn about that, or you do? All you do is sit on Discord and make fun of wrestling and sing into your microphone like a gay little fairy. Well, barely <laughs> all singers are gay, is what you're saying. Yeah, though. Jesse is very yes. anti anti LGBTQ. Jesse, well, see, this is Jesse from 1980. I didn't say that. I love the LGBTQ community. Oh, okay, all right, Jesse. I just want to make sure it's because in the 80s you were a little more aggressive. You know, now you're different. The 80s was the past. What do you live in the past? Well, you know, oh, I just, what do you got a time machine or you got a time machine device that you can use to go back in the past? Because I sure like would Joe love Biden. one. I would use it to go kick the crap out of Hogan. Well, I think a lot of people would do that to go beat up Hogan. Who do you think's worse, Hulk Hogan or CM Punk? I don't want to get into this little fairy tale comparison of yours, but if I had to choose, I'd say it was Hogan. Are you going to vote for Ron DeSantis or Donald Trump? I don't vote for another country's president. I'm sitting on the beautiful beaches of Mexico. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I get it. Mexico. Now, man, all I here. have to vote for in Mexico is which cartel is the leader this time. <laughs> I thought it was you. Why don't you just shut your fucking mouth hey, for hey, once? Hey, hey, hey. You're talking about conspiracy, Jesse. So you're breaking up the cartel. Are you the so-called leader of this uh, Mexican cartel? You don't even know what the name of each cartel in Mexico is. And you do. So apparently you are the head honcho of the Mexican cartel. Well, first of all, I'm closest to Sonoa cartel territory. But that doesn't awesome. mean yeah. that I'm affiliated with it. Any more questions from the Mr. Interrogator? Yeah, actually, I do. I have a lot of questions. Um, oh. <laughs> no, I'll take All right, let's that wrap up the AEW. Let's give, give, your, give, you, give your ratings. We got 388 votes. 388 votes. 44% say good. 19% say awesome. It's a thumbs up show again. Um, I'm going to give it a thumbs down tonight or 5.5. Yeah. It's going to miss for me tonight. Um, and that's, I'm going to give it a five plainly five from Mustafa. Not good. Yeah. Not good. What do you think? Uh, everybody else. Four, four from Pico. Wow. That low. Damn. Wow. Five. John Will's giving it a five. And uh, Jesse is folding laundry, probably. <laughs> He's bleaching something. Je Jesse the Laundry Ventura. <laughs> <laughs> so are, are, do you want to go down through the, uh, the oh, paper, you, Joe, or are you? Uh, yeah, you can get into it. Leave me one second. I'll be I just got to get a drink. I'm really coming right, cool. back. Uh, Luke, and I, Luke and I could actually sort of kind of go through. So we have the, um, the, I guess you want to call it the Blackjack or the 21-man Battle Royal. I'm assuming that that's really just going to go to um, uh, the Orange Cassidy because he's also in it and he's a champion, so most likely he's going to retain. Yeah, I don't even know what's going on in this pay per view. <laughs> you don't? No, I'm more I'm a WWE guy, so I'm following. Uh, it's the same weekend, but I'm what's it called? Uh, Night of Champions. I almost called well, Night again, of Champions crown, crown Jewel like six times. Dude, honestly, <laughs> it's, it's, it's not really that big of a deal because honestly, it, it, they didn't even know what the heck they were going to call themselves the moment after they replaced the freaking, you know, again, which I thought was supposed to be King of the Ring. Then all of a sudden, then they changed it to, you know, Night of Champions. And then, you know, Night of it, Champions, it's, where the world champion isn't defending its title. Exactly. I think, so 
I think it would be smart to move King of the Ring towards like more of November-ish. Or maybe like maybe you win a maybe you win an opportunity at Survivor Series or something. Or like I don't know. So so I feel like there is room for King of the Ring. It's just it I don't think it would have worked um you know if they if they hadn't got rid of Knight of Champions, it wouldn't have worked here because it's like you they they were trying too many things that they were trying to build up like they have the whole Roman and Sammy thing and uh, anyway talk about AEW I don't want to turn this into a WWE podcast so <laughs> we have so we have uh, the TBS Championship also with Jay Cargo taking on uh, Ty Valkyrie um, I don't really I, unfortunately I really don't care about this title run with Jade um, I just don't find it as important I mean again as far as Ty Valkyrie. Personally, I am not a fan of the title reign with Jade uh, in particular. But again, no, if Jade retains, good for her. Don't really care. Did you just did did we just enter a fucking time loop? Because I could have sworn you just said the same thing like four times in a row. Yeah, that's me too. I heard that. Like, like I could have sworn I heard you say, "Me personally, I'm not a fan of Jade's title reign." Me personally, I'm not a fan of Jade's title reign. Like it was just like I don't, back I don't, back back. I don't, I just don't trust Android or technology at this point. Let's move on. Uh, TNT Championship World of the World Matrix in the ladder match. We're in the Matrix. Can you hear me? Deja vu. Yeah, heard ladder yeah, match. So, yeah, we hear you. Yeah, yeah. So the ladder match, you, with, yeah, with Lord Lowe and Christian Cage. Honestly, Wardlow just got the title back. Are you seriously just going to make him a paper champion and just give the title to Christian? No. You know, Wardlow is the TNT champ, so he should be the number one contender, and he has a squash match victory over the world champion. But he's fighting. Not only not only that, but you also, I mean, again, but you also have, again, um, uh, Luchasaurus, you know, also going to be, you know, at ringside. So that can, I mean, yeah, he can also like be eliminated from the equation if the referees throw him out. So that is also an option. So I'm going to go with Wardlow on this one. Yeah, Christian. Hey, Rostafa, Al- As- Axel, Axel, Benilia asks in the chat, who has the worst women's championship reign currently, Jade Cargill or Bianca Belair? Honestly. So, I mean, again, if you're talking in terms of reign based on days, obviously Jade has a longer reign than being, uh, but, but no, I mean, like uh, what's, what's better. Oh, as far as better. I mean, I, again, as, uh, Bianca for me has become stale yeah. in a mm-hmm. lot of ways, but I would still prefer watching her and her reign based upon what she's been able to do than Jade. No plus also Bianca's, Bianca, plus Bianca's really a better good. worker. You know, yeah, I'm, I'm more compelled okay. to watching a Bianca match than a Jade match. Yeah, I feel like Bianca's just held. It's crazy how long she's held that title. Like it feels. Well, yeah, it's only been a year and changed. It's really not been that long. I know, but well, the, you know what's crazy is that we're getting so used to like year plus title reigns that like 400 day reigns are like are like the equivalent of what a 90 day reign used to be. Well, no, no, not, no remember we, we've, we've had year reigns before in the past. We've had year reigns or a little over a year. No, reign. I mean, we've had so many of them though. Like there was a time for, through a lot of wrestling where it's like, you know, from the two thousands and 2010s and stuff like that. And even the nineties where it's like those types of reigns really weren't very common. And then when punk had that 434 day reign, it was like a huge deal now it's like every other fucking championship reign is a 400 something day reign. You know what I mean? So now there's been so many year plus title reigns in professional wrestling lately that it, it's not special anymore. It doesn't matter. Yep. Uh, we have a, t- we have a, a six minute tag match with the Hardys and Isaiah Cassidy taking on Ethan page and the guns. If Hardy party wins, then Matt controls uh, pages contract. Marty's broken, uh, if not, when, wait, wait a minute. When the fuck was that announced? Oh, no, it's been going on. I mean, it's it's really been like a side thing. Like it started like on like the, the YouTube shows like AEW Dark and Elevation, that type of thing, uh-huh. where Party was kind of basically under the, uh, you know, <laughs> Ethan Page and those guys. And then he broke free of that contract and they've just been fighting back and forth. So it's like the culmination oh, of all that pretty much. Gotcha. I hate when shit is started on YouTube. Yeah, well, I think. Uh, 
I think, like, I don't know, it just annoys me. It's like, oh, I guess there's a storyline going on. Yeah, don't you watch their YouTube channel? Like, I I don't know, maybe they should be on the show. WWE and NXT does that, too, and it annoys me. Honestly, just give it to the baby faces, because, you know, again, Jeff's back, and you kind of want to have that feel-good moment and stuff, and so why not give it to the gets Until he gets in an accident, you know? You know what I noticed they do a lot now in wrestling, where it's like, you know what I noticed they do a lot now um, in wrestling? It's like a guy will be like the commentator will be like, well, these guys actually oh, the reason why they're having a match is because earlier this week, these two were beefing in t- on Twitter. And then they like show like a post on Twitter. And it's like, what a lame reason to fight. You know what I mean? Well, that sounds more like, like over. A, a, it sounds more like Excalibur, especially like, you know, oh, he, I'm assuming Joe hated this, but he brought back pile driver. Brought that. Oh, back. God, I, didn't, I, I didn't used to like it, and it's whatever. It's not that bad, but it's just as long as other stuff is good, then I don't mind him. At, sometimes I like it when he's kind of like a maniac. I'm gonna say the only commentator that's been great in AEW has been Tony Schiavone. Yeah, he's hey, pretty man. good usually. A- AEW he's World Tag Team Championship. So. AEW World Tag Team Championship. We have FTR defending the titles against Jay Lethal and Jeff Jarrett with Mark Briscoe as a special guest referee. Mm. I mean, the, the, the Jeff Jarrett and, and Jay Lethal have been going after the tag titles for a while. Um, I believe this is the third time on a pay per view they've been going after the, uh, the the tag titles, or at least the third tag team title match I believe that they've had in a couple months. And um, so yeah, far, they've been, been yeah, they've been trying to cheat to win, basically doing the whole Memphis sort of kind of styling of, of wrestling. They're adding Mark Briscoe. They're trying to you know mark that down. Um, I would say that it necessarily wouldn't hurt FTR if they were to drop the titles, but at the same time, they just won them on a dynamite not too long ago. I would say keep the titles on them. Yeah. Agreed. So, yeah. The so, uh, uh, we have uh, the AEW Women's Championship match. We have Jamie Hayter taking on Tony Storm. Honestly, this one is just an easy peasy one for me, just because, again, I'm not a, the biggest fan of the women's wrestling overall in AEW. I think there can definitely be improvement, but I'll just keep the belt on Hater because I'm assuming eventually we're going to get Hater versus Britt Baker at some point with Britt being the heel. Or, or, or you know maybe funny? the other way around. I don't know. I was thinking you were talking about uh, who's, who's what's Jack Swagger's new name now? Jake Hagar Jake or Hager, something. Yeah, I thought you were yeah. talking about him. Yep. So I was, I was thinking of him going against like Britt Baker <laughs> and just like <laughs> ripping ripping her fucking head off. <laughs> Good fucking yeah, or breaking her or breaking her back. Even you know, he would even her, an- he's giving her really another good black eye for a t- for um for JD to virtue signal about. Uh, yeah, oh you know, <laughs> yeah, fucking midget fuck. Hey, I played three women <laughs> until I broke all their hearts and they wanted to die, but now I'm gonna virtue signal about this. When I shit talk women all the time on my podcast, yeah, I shit talk women all the time to the point where I said that um, Alexa Bliss can't have sex or something, even though she's like one of the most beautiful women in professional wrestling. Boring in Apparently bed. Apparently, she can't have sex. So like, boring what is he bed. talking about? He said boring in bed, basically. Yeah. And what's annoying about that was that he praised her all the time in 2016, like said how great she was, this, that, and the third. And then as soon as like she starts becoming popular, like he he starts to turn like, I don't know. I feel like there's a lot of fakery with him where it's just like, oh, now I got to be angry at this person because it would. I mean, now I'm goes- controversial for it. The fakery with him goes back to fucking forever ago. I can tell you, you know what I mean? Like, how many things? I mean, dude, you know? Yeah, I know. I know. All right, try we, we have the unsanctioned. We have the unsanctioned match between Chris Jericho and Adam Cole. Um, got to give, I guess, give it to Adam Cole. Because I has, can't has, get my money in the bank that. open. The zero zero combo doesn't work. Get it open, Daddy. I don't know what to. Oh. <laughs> he really wanted that? that thing open, you know. I can't get my money in the bank open. The zero zero combo doesn't work. Get it open, Daddy! I don't know what to. <laughs> was there actually a, was there actually like a contract, like a fake um, one? No, I don't think there ever was. But what was in it was a signed Dean Ambrose photo from when we 
got the money in the bank that night at the wrestling show with Gavin like six years ago. Imagine it was like a signed, a signed autograph from like a wrestler you wouldn't want to be like. Oh yeah. I, oh, I got it. I'm from... okay. Like it, like Curtis Axel or something. <laughs> yeah, <it's... laughs> yeah, it was uh, so, Seth so Rollins. Got, who's got, the Joe? lamest? Who's the lamest wrestler you can think of that you would definitely not want an autograph from? <laughs> Um, like Brian uh, Kendrick. Uh, <laughs> so, Joe, so Joe, who do you got? Do you have Dana Derek Brooke? No, I'd take Dana Brooke. I, I like I like her a little bit. Jericho or Sorry, Cole? Sorry, over. What were you going to say, Rostov? It was Jericho versus Cole in an unsanctioned match. Who do you got? Jericho versus Cole. Um, yeah, I'm going to go Cole. Gotcha. You're getting okay. cold for Christmas or something. I you have anarchy cold. in the arena. You got the we basically got the elite taking on uh Blackpool Combat Club. <sighs> also in an unsanctioned, uh, you know, again, anarchy in the rules, whatever you want to call it, match. You guys feel like Roger Strong would be a good fit for Blackpool Combat Club? Like I feel like he his style fits that. Like in a way, but I, but right but right now I, I, he's you know. Yeah, I mean I think it, they've missed the mark with that. Like it, he should have come back when everybody was available for the undisputed era. Now it's just like, Hey, Roderick strong. He's Adam Cole's buddy. You know, like he, he would be well suited in that group. I wouldn't be surprised if they do something with him in there, like, um, whatever down the line. I would say, keep it going as far as like keeping the heat on the elite. And I would definitely think that, uh, Don Callis would definitely interfere in this. So I would say give it to Blackpool Combat Club for the uh, for the win. Yeah. I might be a little late on this, but I just saw this about the AEW video game. Yeah. Yeah. It's coming out. Shit. Coming yeah, it's out coming out June. on my it's coming on my birthday, I think. Awesome. Am I right? Is Wouldn't it be the, great if it gets is, is it near my birthday? It'd be great it... if it gets postponed <laughs> again. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's the t- I think it's I'm I don't know I'm not confident in it that it's going to be anything spectacular but no but I think I think it might be so like you know what I mean like kind of like whatever that it could be funner than maybe a fun game because it's got fucking weird stuff that happens and you know those, those you, see, you see the blood mode that they uh, have like just the way that the blood is is shed yeah it looks like in like a fucking horror movie. Honestly, WWE wrestling games have not been very great. Like, there's some people who are like, "Oh my god, 2K23 is the best wrestling game ever." It's like that. It's every year. This is the best wrestling game ever, but they still haven't fixed any of the flaws that have carried in the entire series. Can you let me wear a championship belt without it glitching through my fucking jacket? Is that any possibility that that can get fixed with your fucking thirty game series? that I have to spend 60 full fucking dollars on every year. Like I'm fuck that shit. And then they make a DLC. They make it like extra 50 fucking dollars to buy a DLC with the NWO only for the next year for it to be available for free. So who's the real fucking sucker there? Sorry. So speaking of titles, the main event, the headlining match, AEW world heavyweight championship, MJF, jungle boy, Darby Allen, Sammy Guevara, I think this is the no-brainer. Yeah. yeah, this is the no-brainer. And, you know, quite honestly, I got to be honest with you, man, maybe CM Punk comes back at the end of the pay-per-view, and that's why they didn't announce him for Collision. Uh, that's the that's the problem, though, because the thing is they still haven't established once he goes on Collision, like, what are the brands going to look like? And then also, like, that, let's say he wants to fight for the title. He's on another show, but yet all the other guys are on the other show. That doesn't uh, matter. I don't think Imagine they introduce another world championship. Oh, God. No. Oh, and, like, I, instead, so now there's going to be like an MJF AEW title collision. and an AEW world title. MJF will just go to collision. Christ. That's all. He's the world champion. He'll go to collision. Yeah, I know, but I'm saying imagine they introduce another world title. No, I'll kill myself. I mean, I'll 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 oh, flip no. out, dude. I'll flip out on Tony Khan if that happened. <laughs> With his big coke, hey, his maybe, big wide-eyed coke stare. <laughs> maybe they can announce a new title and then that person will say, "And this is we're going to do it right this time and it's going to be like a real title unlike that other title that someone doesn't want to defend and they'll just Damn bury the AEW title." title. 
Oh my God, Joe, speaking of that, speaking of that, in my fucking YouTube recommendations, here's two things that popped up. One, um, it's a quote from Seth, and he's staring at Roman, and he's like, I want to become World Heavyweight Champion so that we can all forget about Roman Reigns. What does that even mean? Yeah, because that won't happen. And then second is from WWE on USA. Why are Seth Rollins and AJ Styles more focused on Roman Reigns than each other in their title match? Oh, my oh, God. What, what the hell like, are they doing, what? dude? I don't know. I'm don't assuming, know. <laughs> you know what I'm, in, you know what I think it's all going to lead to is whoever wins this championship match is going to face Roman to and unify losing. these titles. And then Roman's going to win so they can have the big, nice, shiny belt on Roman and they can get rid of like either the universal title or the, the WWE title. Too. And they only and did it for Saudi that, Arabia then really. That's like the big thing. The only reason why they're keeping around the universal championship and not just getting rid of it is because Roman started his historic reign with that title and they don't want to fuck up that leg. Uh, they're facing too is that in that tag title oh, main event, right? Right? It's, it's like in the tag title main event we run into two problems one is that if let's just say if roman and Soko- and solo sokoa win the titles let's just say right you realize that roman can't get pinned once they lose those tag titles right it has to be solo sokoa which he's only lost only one match before and that was against cody but then if so uh, Solo and Roman lose the match and don't win the tag titles. Again, they're just gonna have to expedite the process with the Usos and um Roman and Solo in a certain way. So it might be before SummerSlam or something. Like it's just a very very weird but yet intriguing. The the SummerSlam main event. Over. The SummerSlam well, main event is gonna be is gonna be uh the Usos versus Roman and Solo, which. That's, I mean, that's the most plausible one, and it's annoying because it's like Roman will still be champion, so that's like two pay per views that he's not going to be defending the title. Yeah, yeah, I don't even know if he's going to say, and I'm just saying that with the tag titles being in the mix, honestly, it's like you're holding the tag division hostage, and it's like there's no opportunity for the tag titles to truly be defended in a regular way. I don't think they're going to put the tag titles, I don't see them going over. Imagine they put the tag titles on Roman and then introduce a new set of tag titles. Oh, and then we all, and then we all just fucking kill ourselves. We just take the cyanide pills like all together at once. You all don't count yourself. We would hold hands on the Discord. I don't know how you do it, but we would, and we would would all kill ourselves. I would join you. Yeah, you know what, Miss? No, you know, actually, no. Mister Pico said he said like we'll say he's gonna do it, and then he he'll just like back out on it and we'll all be dead and he'll probably uh, make and, a and fucking Pico will be the only one on there <laughs> he'll be the only one and then he and then he's gonna just um <laughs> he's just gonna like change his fo- like photo to like our gravestones or something <laughs> yeah I would do that. or our <laughs> autopsy reports I thought you said autism reports I was like what the fuck <laughs> <laughs> Dude, somebody get now? Tommy <laughs> Somebody get Tommy's autism report. <laughs> oh my god! What's going on in sunny North Carolina? Black what? Mountain here, and here's the official autism report of the day. <laughs> I just messed up. I uncontrollably rubbed up. We're gonna go on up. a <laughs> Oh, I uncontrollably <laughs> rubbed say? up on some girl. <laughs> what did he say one, that one time? He's like, they're going, the YouTube's going, going for some, for hangings. some hangings. <laughs> yeah, we're going out for some hangings. <laughs> On that note, like, Joe, that's, that's, a thing, that's, that's a thing you do every weekend. You go out for the hangings. That's a weird thing to say. The hangings. It was always a suspect <laughs> it's the thing tree, to it's, say. <laughs> the hanging tree's right outside his house, too. Oh, boy. Yeah, how many people were hung from that tree? <laughs> oh, fuck. Oh, my God. <laughs> I I love when you um were as Dilk Wilkerson one time and you're like, Tommy, you wanna fucking you wanna say that shit to me? Were you fucking laughing? Is that what you're doing? Well let me ask you something. Were you fucking laughing when you were standing over your barber's fucking coffin? Oh my god. Oh and they're going out for some hangings. (laughs) And they're going out for some hangings. I hope you hang your mother. (laughs) You hope they're going out for some hangings. It was like he said that randomly. It was like, "Who says going out for some hangings?" 
<laughs> he said they were, the, you know, the, hey, they, Joe. it was something to do with Hollywood. He was like, it's like they're going after this guy, man. It's like they're going out for some hangings. And I was it like, it was who, YouTube. Who, YouTube's yo, yeah. going for some hangings. And I'm like, who says that? Like, what, no one uses that terminology. Unless, like, what, what the fuck? And they're going out for some hangings. Hey, JB. <laughs> JB, do you want to join me in my. It's like kind of a ritual I do. We say, you Hollywood, you Hollywood, you Hollywood. <laughs> and, uh, Jamie, would you leave to... me out with a chant? Gonna real have to pass. What do you mean? I, oh um, I have God. all my guests chant the, uh, uh, an ex- a thing that I say all the time, you Hollywood. Would you mind chanting with me before I end the show? Gonna have to pass. Okay. <laughs> you Hollywood, you Gonna Hollywood, have to pass. you Hollywood. Keep Jeez, doing Jesus. Assaults. Keep. <laughs> Jesus. Legendary. Look! 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 Look Jesus. at Pico's uh, profile. Look! 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 Is that like Luke's father's tombstone? Are you a fucking asshole or something? I don't understand. My that. father's oh, name was Jerry, actually. Oh, okay. oh, God, after JD? Oh. Yeah, and you know what's funny? Uh, my dad actually uh, loved cats. So you know what? He, one time, he, told, he told me a story, like, you know, like near the end or whatever, that he, um, right I don't know, like he, he found this cat, like somebody just left him dead and smushed on the road and my dad was like Jesus. oh my god and he and he felt bad because he thought this was the cat that he fed all the time and so he buried the cat you know he gave him like a grave and everything yeah and then later on that day he sees the cat that he fed <laughs> all the time show up and so he's like oh my god thank god i thought you were dead um so yeah i don't know why i share that story little, no little did he know he did be- it was that cat and, the, and he buried the cat still alive and the cat had to scrape and claw to get out of the ground <laughs> yeah. that's yeah. funny no i was like that's I'd probably be like, it i was like you i i saw a bu- dude i'm so fucking weird remember this this was a couple years ago i might have sh- shown it on the show actually we found a fucking injured butterfly in the backyard and i brought it inside and took care of it for two weeks until it died I mean, it was. Oh my god! I'm fucking weird, bro. Like, I'm like me, and my me and the kids are outside. Nothing, There's a butterfly. Nothing, you know why? Because animals, be animals. I I feel like there is a love for animals that you have to be a sociopath or just like a really selfish person to not like sympathize with them. You know what I mean? I'm sure there's some people in the chat like, fuck, fuck dogs. I don't give a fuck. I hope they all get AIDS. You know, but well, they like, can go to hell. But it is weird that, like, people who are, like, crazy, like Joe and my dad, do, like, sympathize really well with, like, animals, and they try their best to take care of it. It's weird, man. It's like, but we step on ants and spiders, but it's like, you know, it. I don't know. I don't think it's weird. It's because it's like, oh, this pretty butterfly. And you're like, man, this butterfly is going to die here in the middle of the yard. And I was like, oh. You know, and then, the, you know, the kids took care of it and we put gave it sugar and water. And I couldn't do it every day. Leah was like, you know, it's going to die. Even, dude, that's the funny thing about <laughs> my wife and me. It's like my wife, right? The one that's like, oh, I'm really liberal and everything. She's like, you know, it's going to die in like two days. Like, what's the point? And I'm like, I don't know. Like, And in two weeks and every day she was like, I can't believe this fucking butterfly is still alive and living in this. It had the little sticks. It was sitting on the sticks and everything it was just weird it was like it what it really did it live it lived two weeks what if it was a diabetic yeah. and eating it sugar then i i don't know fuck it then i helped it die I slowly yeah i don't know why <laughs> that story popped up in my head i was just i've been thinking about my i brought dad up your dad i brought so up your like, dad mm-hmm. i brought up his thing those weird those weird types of stories just like you need to start the jerry like, oh, yeah. you need to start the jerry rojas show then <laughs> yeah that's that's all i call myself you know what no because luke i feel like is such a more iconic thing like dan dan cronin you know that kind of like sounds like some guy who like you know is your accountant i see yeah something. i sound you know, like joe a, cronin yeah i sound like a lawyer or something yeah, yeah no, I mean you're really you're really giving yourself some credit there. 
Yeah. I sound like a lawyer. I sound like I could be a brain surgeon, the best one in the country, probably. Like this is a really bad so one. Get over yourself. Nothing. You sound like a guy that you sound like a guy who installs carpets or some shit. All right. That's true. Either rebooting Matlock. Oh no. Oh my god. Why do they have to reboot Matlock. every show from the eighties? That's crazy. We'll just don't what fuck is with it? Alf. Oh my fucking god. Who's gonna bro. be Matlock? It's Kathy oh, Bates. You're about, oh, you're talking about an old TV show. Matlock. Kathy Bates? How is she going to be Matlock? It's a woman Matlock. Oh, my They're God. Just, yeah. Uh, just, I can't wait until they fucking... I can't wait till they redo Family Ties. What, and there's have, no and need have, like, to do that. Practice. Just have a fucking show where she's a lawyer and not do Matlock. What the fuck, man? Walker Texas Ranger it. was it's like oh my I'm going to I'm going to blow my brains out. Is she going to be well, his, it's like his daughter? it's either it's either she's like the female version of Matlock or like she's Matlock's like sister or something no, I don't like think there's a relation. There's a trailer out. It's on YouTube. There's, a, out, so. there's yeah, no so relation. It's going to be a fucking it's just going to be a straight up female remake. That's just stupid. I think so. Why no, like, no what's the point of that? Fucking and if you're remakes. a feminist, how do you how do you consider yourself a feminist to support shit like that when they're literally just using a proper like a popular property property and IP to pump up the show and they're just like, oh, we'll put a woman there. Like, does that not seem exploitive or seem like pandering to you at all? Or are you just like feed, like eating the slop that they fucking give you and just like yeah, progressive? I, I'm just blown away by this whole world at this point. Yeah, it's stupid. Guess it's what? I'll really watch stupid. Like they're gonna they're doing a um they're doing a Magnum PI fucking remake TV show. They did one on the fucking they did one on Lethal Weapon. They did one on Didn't they fucking, do Night Rider? Um, did they new did they redo Night Rider? Yeah, they did yeah. They did Night Rider and it's fucking terrible. They did uh, a Mac MacGyver and it's terrible. Quantum Leap. Oh yeah, I, no. I heard Quantum Leap was Rush like hour. halfway okay, but then it's a little wokey. So I heard. Yeah, you're no, talking I, about Matlock, but what? Yeah, you were you were talking about Matlock with Annie Griffith, right? Yeah. Well, yeah, we were talking oh, about how they're rebooting. Oh, okay. Kathy okay. Bates. Now it's going to be a oh, girl. Okay. Who's Kathy Bates? Uh, Misery. Oh, why doesn't she? Why don't they just do murder? She wrote then. Yeah. Oof. Madeline, yeah, they'll probably they will. They probably will. They probably will. And dude, because you know, Kathy Bates is Und good. Andatra but... in the fucking chat brings this up, and this pisses me off too. That Hulu has a show called White Man uh, Can't Jump or something. Yeah, well, yeah but that, that that movie. Here's yeah, the. You know what the problem with that no, show? The movie I, was like, Here's the problem with that show. The problem with that show is going to be it's going to be all about the race stuff where the movie wasn't really about that at all. The movie, yeah, it's a movie genre, I didn't sure. even know. I didn't even know there was a movie. You've never seen that I'm movie? Just, I'm just yeah. No, but I'm, what I'm saying is oh my God. nowadays nowadays it is impossible to do a show saying like black man fucking can't pay their taxes or something or you know like you know what i mean no but we wouldn't look, make a show about that you gotta go watch but but go, i'm telling you but we're gonna make a sh go watch the movie go watch the movie white man can't jump it's from like 1993 or something it's i'm telling you i'm not really mad about the movie I, like i'm sure the movie is better obviously but i'm saying no you gotta go but see what the i'm movie, saying though. is no, you're gonna what like i'm saying is movie. i'm annoyed that Nowadays, you would never be able to get away with making a show called "Black Man Can't Do Something." Well, so you're gonna you make, but, you but we can make a show called "White Man Can't Jump." Like, yes, I understand it's a remake and it's already been done before, but it, like the hypocrisy and double standard there is annoying. Well, well if they they keep up if they're consistent at least in the movie. Like, what was it? Fucking, you can't hear Jimmy. You gotta feel it. like you like you can't like bend like your wife. Yeah, like you I, you gotta. That's what I, made I gotta, it for me too. I gotta tell That's you, bro. That's what made it for God, me too, Jesse. That you got it. Uh, I'm telling you yeah. that that movie came out a long time ago, and you're actually Woody Harrelson's in it. You're gonna with Wesley Snipes. You, you gotta go watch that movie. That. Look, uh, yeah. you know what I like you. with you know what I like with Woody Har Harrelson is um 
is Kingpin. I really yes, like that. Yes, I, I mean, oh, yeah. dude, it's 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 that type of '90s movie where it's like, it's one of those movies that used to come on, you know, back in the day, it would come on like late at night, and you're like, I've never seen this. What is this? And then you get glued to it, and then you watch it, find yourself watching it a lot back in the '90s. Like, it's a movie you should you should definitely watch that movie. That's a staple movie. Know. Like you know that's what, like you, you know get, what I'm show, saying it's really you know what really show good. I seen. You know what show I saw the commercial of and it made me want to like rip my skin off is Make um one. no you know, that's terrible is um Bup Kiss with Pete Davidson and it's another one of these like fucking self gratifying things that he does where he pl- where he's like oh yeah I'm just like this cool dude that hangs out with really cool people oh, look I'm hanging out with Joe Pesci isn't he super interesting more interesting than me but you know fucking like that's that's Pete Davidson's career is hanging out with much, much more in- interesting people than himself. He looks like a fucking but for loser. For some reason, he looks like a guy from Boston that I know that like it sells weed. Like he doesn't. It's weird. That's his whole fucking. That's his whole gimmick is that he's like, oh, yeah, I don't even care, man. Like whatever, dude. I guess I'm here. I'm not. You know, more or less, whatever. He reminds me of. It's if like Ad- those. Remember if Adam Sandler was only on. If Adam Sandler had only been on Saturday Night Live and never did anything good that was in a movie, that's who Pete Davidson reminds me of. He's like, I'm so cute. He's like if Adam Sandler had no comedic timing or or anything, really, and was just a giant douchebag. I yeah, mean, I don't like you him. can say Adam Sandler's a douchebag, but he takes care of his friends. Like, Adam Sandler, when he was younger, had this, like, talent and this charisma to him. Pete Davidson has this charisma, has this feeling of like, oh, I've already done it. You know what I mean? Like he's acting like he's in his 40s and he's already be- made it to the big scene. Like, dude, you just got here. Yeah, I, he's never really see to me. He's never really done it that much. And he's got some kind of lore about him. And it's like, why? I don't understand it. Runs. That's what it is too. Like, I think who, he sold his. I th- think he sold his soul or something. No, I gotta yeah, believe he yeah. must have a ten inch cock or something, dude. Because like, and then one girl banged him, and then they told someone else, and that's gotta be what's going on. Because what else is he doing besides he kind of like is like the cool guy, I guess, from the high school. But then there's nothing else going on really. Like it's he's, not even like the, I'm serious. Like Justin like, Timberlake has way like if Justin Timberlake never did in sync, but he just acted, he has more f- credibility. I think he, I hope he gets whacked by like Joe Pesci or something. You know, <laughs> why couldn't he leave his fucking Jeep break off the wrong way and get crushed in a fence like fucking Anton Yelchin instead of him? Like, why <laughs> he lose Pete Yel- like what the fuck, bro? You know what? No, I don't want that to happen because then he'd be he'd be fucking um a like mar- an icon. A martyr you know? a would martyr be... for retards. Yeah, he would no, he would be <laughs> def- like def- <laughs> he'd have a legacy defined at that point. Like Pete Davidson. He had so much he, yeah. this kid had There's... so much potential. They'd be talking about him like they talk about Chris Patrice Farley. O'Neill. It's like so much potential. He could have he could have taken over the world with his comedy. Chris Farley was but only thirty three he... years old. And he was on top oh, of the God. world. Chris Farley, have heard him. <laughs> imagine, imagine comparing Pete Davidson to Chris Farley. Like they're yeah, like no, the that's, same that's fucking... you're dead on. <laughs> that's would be you, they'd be like Chris Farley, John uh, Belushi, and then they'd be like Pete Davidson, and they'd be like what? Chris Farley is one million times better than fucking Pete Davidson. I agree. Chris Farley has a brother, has a twin we brother. All... Yes, that looks exactly and sounds exactly like he him. looks. He's the, like, he's, he's, the he's literally like the boring version of Chris Farley. <laughs> like that's his brother is like. And he's yeah. He's like. Yeah, he's, like he's like if um Chris Farley was playing a character of himself. <laughs> yeah, like like none of the Chris Farley was real <laughs> and he wasn't shit. acting anymore. I'm Chris. The government cheese. My bro- <laughs> my brother <laughs> was wild. He was very intense. My man, brother, you on Saturday so we Night Live, all... man. The night from 1986, I'm a classic. <laughs> we all agree then, Pete, like... da- Pete Davidson should die. That's what we're all saying. Right? I think we all agree Agreed. that most of the people, I think we all agree that SNL is a fucking unfunny vacuum of shit. Mm. I yeah, now it's turned to fucking politics. Year and then... We can all agree that. It's just like so, like some, my, um, my cousin die, SNL, said die. something to me. 
Mm-hmm. My cousin said something to me that made me think, like, for a second, like, maybe he's got a point. Maybe that's why SNL's still part, uh, still around, is that he said it's like it's like the NXT for for actors and you know comedians is where it's like basically not every skit is meant to be good. It's just to see if this person can take it, I guess, and see which stars are going to be the future of Hollywood. Um, see if they can but, take I it mean, up the still, ass. So they can make money. Like I yeah. said, I think they're waiting for their 50th season. And Remember when quit. somebody the other day, they were like, Joe, I don't, I hope somebody said the other day to me, they were like, you know, Joe, you'd be good on Saturday Night Live. And I said, because we were talking about the commentary or whatever. And I was like, yeah, dude, you think that they wouldn't hire me because of whatever Saturday Night Live would fucking like, I'd be like fired in a day. Remember that other guy? Remember the other guy that got fired for what he said on a podcast? Oh yeah, you wouldn't last long. You, remember, you would not the, last that long. That guy didn't even do anything. <laughs> remember, they fired that guy. He was he was announced to be on Saturday Night Live, and then like a week later, he was fired for something he said on a podcast like seven years ago, and it wasn't even that bad. Remember, it was like ridiculous. Like it wasn't bad at all. It was Asian, dude. If, if, dude, if so true add- though. Keenan, so true in the chat. Everybody's shitting on Keenan. Yeah, Keenan Thompson is like the least fucking funny person ever. And he's been on that show for 30 years. He's the longest reigning tenured. Yeah. Person. Hey, Joe. Oh, I'm, hey, so, hey. I'm talking like this. Like, I don't know what's going on. That's his character. Wait, you're talking about like, I'm just the black guy reacting to things. The other Good Burger guy tried hey. out and he didn't make it. No, I'm he's not. He Because he really, what does he do? Like, he actually look, he looks like a criminal. He doesn't seem like a comedian. That guy. <laughs> I, I'm he serious. He looks like a criminal. Yeah, he, I'm telling oh you. God. like, And then when they get... The only funny people they do have on the show don't get any fucking screen time or or are playing like or play like side character that barely has a line. Right. Listen, I'll, I'll give credit to Keenan because I think he's got some really funny reactions a lot of times. He's like a silly guy that he doesn't have a high ceiling to me. Like he's just like a like a solid six out of ten guy that I would hire no, too is because he's versatile kind of for things but yeah I don't think he's like amazing or anything close that's his character is I'm the black guy reacting to things <laughs> yeah that's, that certainly is, <laughs> that certainly is strange <laughs> man white people be crazy yeah, that's I'm pretty it. sure that's they actually did a skit like that with him I'm pretty sure they've done yeah, a skit they, like that with him because that is like, yeah, that's every him. fucking skit with a black person as like the lead is always about like today we're doing uh we're doing a talk show, but with black people, yeah. <laughs> it's like Conan. But if he was black, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I am Conan O'Brien, but I'm saying black things. And I would say that uh, who's the and forget Keenan then, Let, and let's think about this because honestly I got to be honest, Saturday Night Live actually really, if you think about it, and this is a lot of Jewish and white men write Saturday Night Live. An Asian, that one Asian, that who, one Asian guy that they who had said to that hire. Asi- <laughs> who said that Asians were like always? Oh um, my God, fun. that guy he said, he that said was. <laughs> What did he say that where where he was no, like? No, um, I'll flip the fuck out. Don't bring this guy up. He said, <laughs> "Well, because Asians have had had it hard in the country for so long, and it was like, dude, are always, you fucking retarded. Always. Yeah, maybe when it comes to a black guy in a dark alley, you've had a hard time. But other than that, maybe, you guys, or maybe oh in the fucking fifties, maybe in the fifties when there was those type like those camps and yeah. shit. But well, it's the fucking what have you a fucking entitled gay liberal in New York? ever had like what troubles did you ever have to fucking go through dude asians mm-hmm. lead the, you're, you're asians lead the country in salaries city. income and sat scores and stuff like that like they literally lead the country the only problem the asians have is black people are getting into college over them because they're so bad at it that they needed to give them a head start and uh, literally asians are so favored in this country that the only negative stereotypes we have against them is that they're good at math at math yeah. like yeah that's a real negative stereotype and and you guys are the, smart they can't drive cars some of them but that's about it you know other than not that, all of us are smart but <laughs> not straight yeah so it's just a bullshit uh, that guy pissed me off like crazy but no seriously but most of you know it's funny he's what can, i actually like him from another show no like, he's funny on this show called oh. uh 
Nor- Nora from Queens. Like he's actually really funny on that show. Really, but that douchey comment that he made really just like rubs me the wrong way. Yeah. Yep. He Saturday is. Night Live has literally had become a political comedy show. That's all it is. Yeah. But but no, it's like it's, it's, but it's not even that. Show. It's not Where's even the that comedy? though. Yeah. The politics though are hidden because sometimes it's not. Like, the where's the goddamn comedy? <laughs> And they can't even they can't even it's only the politics that the studio executives will agree with. Nobody, like, who nobody wants shit? to we go... want comedy, not fucking politics. Yeah, but huh. even if they the, did... And they're so they're so puss, pussified that literally even though their whole thing is attacking Republicans, they one time that they attacked a Republican literally. who had like an ailment or a physical disability, they had to like apologize on air to for it. And Pete oh. Davidson who made the joke had to sit there and get roasted by this guy as an, as like penance. What a faggot. Ooh. What a fuck. Yeah, exactly. Bunch of pussies. And let me and, tell and you again, something. Joe, hey, Joe. Hey, Joe. A... Yes. I just wanted to tell you, if 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 you try to call Saturday Night Live one day and have, ask them to have them hire you, you know what they would say? They'd be telling you, no, I watched your videos. You're just – you, you, you act like a Republican who – who talks like right wing shit? I'm like, what the uh, fuck are you talking about, bro? They would, they would fire me. I think they for just a... wouldn't get back to you. No, they would. They, they, they just <laughs> yeah. wouldn't. They wouldn't get back to me. Yeah, no, they, they would. They get rid of me for, dude. They got rid of that other guy. That what did he say? It was something ridiculous. Like, do you remember what he said? That guy that got fired right away. It was something so, so was stupid, dude. It wasn't. It wasn't bad at all, dude. I've said a thousand times worse this week on my show. Like that. That's why. Like whoever said that the other day, I was like, "Yeah, that wouldn't happen." And it's like, I don't and, know. And, and, and I, it, nowadays, it, I could be a, I could be, I could be a bleeding left liberal too, and they still would fire me because you just can't say whatever. But back, but it was the nineties on, on NBC, especially. It's an NBC show. Yeah, so it's, it's, an, like, it's, it's a, a it's a it's a leftist liberal. company for for a fact. The, all that stuff. You know what we should do? You know what I should have done a long time <laughs> ago? What you know what I should have done back when my show was crushing it. Back when I made like fucking awesome money and I didn't have another job because YouTube was all I did. You know what I should have done at that point? I should have looked around for like some people and st- literally started a new channel, a separate channel, where it was just like a skit show. And we just start the new Saturday Night Live on YouTube and then oh. become known for that. Like this this channel's fucking hilarious to do skits. And uh, I think that could have blown up. I should have done that with all my free time that I had. <laughs> now I don't. By know. the Jay way, the most savage. overrated. The most overrated fucking um, SNL skit of all time is "Gotta Get More Cowbell." Not funny Jay, at all. Jay Savage oh, in the goodness. chat said said all all late night shows talk for talk to bury Republicans. I say I agree. <laughs> uh, all late yeah, night to- that's to- true. Shows. Oh yeah, that's all they do. Yeah, that, that's all they do, and that's and you know, I mean, I'm they have the I'm, same re they I'm they use left-leaning. the same jokes. So- I'm fairly left leaning. I'm just saying, like, too, like, it's just like, I don't want this bullshit. Like, I want it to be fair for every. I don't agree with a lot of it's the right. It's fair, man. You somebody made a funny, it. somebody made a funny um, compilation video of, like, just late night shows, um, all except pretty much just Conan mm-hmm. reusing the same jokes. Like, Seth Myers did the same joke on the Hindenburg that. Stephen Colbert did, and Stephen Colbert did the same joke that Jimmy Fallon did, and Jimmy Fallon did the same joke that Jimmy Kimmel did, and it's and all of them, of course, were like some way to bash on Trump and stuff like that, and it's really sickening uh-huh. of just how of how regurgitated and how little creativity goes into those late night shows. I'll give you, I'll give Jimmy some reason, credit, Jimmy Fallon credit, even though I don't like Jimmy Fallon, I don't think he's funny, and I just don't like him. But he is an he, he seems like an honestly nice guy. And when they were trying to make yeah, he does. they were trying to make him do all the political stuff and he wasn't doing it on his show. And he literally came out and said, like, I don't want to do that. I want to do funny stuff and not do political. And then they got pissed. That's great. Yeah. Remember that? That's so why like, I like Conan. That's why I like Conan. Because, yes. yeah, he would make jokes on Trump. But his he never forgot that it's a comedy show. And also he evolved like he I don't know if if they forced him out of the whole talk show thing or whatever. But he went to do the podcast thing and the podcast format is so much better. It works so much better to have conversations with your guests because 
the idea of a late night show is like, oh yeah, we're I'm gonna interview a few guests or whatever. But it the, the way it's staged and framed and stuff like that, it just doesn't feel like he has very well like any real connection with anybody that he's talking Conan to. Was, it feels like I loved Conan's like stuff though, because he would do that when he would do the man on a street stuff or a little skit. And remember when he did the video game reviews too, that stuff, like all those things. And I, that was newer, but do you remember when he, do you remember when he went to the costume shop that one time? Oh my God. My, uh, my, my mom loves that. Loves Conan. So dude, I showed her that video Conan. and she was, hysterically I, laughing even when i was younger <laughs> i think we've always said there was like a time in the late 90s there was a time in the early 2000s oh. there was a time in the mid 2000s where you always thought man conan's the best late night show you know to me he's and then, like, yeah, any show with him and norm was was fucking awesome too and i feel like bill burr even though i'm not that big of a fan of his comedy anymore really he always does deliver when he has when he does something with conan like they have oh, good yeah. chemistry with each other. Yeah, they definitely. They Although now, do. now everything that fucking Bill Burr does is like semi woke, but also semi like uh, kind of a crotchety can uh, old man type. Yeah. Like, you know, I believe in I believe in equal rights and you know feminism and black. Blah, 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 yeah, I love Bill, all of that. Bill's uh, turning but, into a crotchety. But can we? Can the black people stop eating so much M and M's? You know, like, like yeah. he'll he'll go after them only a little bit. You know, as much as you possibly can without getting in trouble, but then backtrack it by being like, of course, I love I love white people. I love, you know, I, or I hate white people. I think they all should just die in a fire, you know, and, and black people are amazing. But uh, can black people stop talking in the movie pe movie theater too loud? You know? Yeah. Yeah. He's, he, he, and then he emasculates himself 20 times before, before he can make over. another joke. He's all over the isn't place. Bill Burr, isn't Bill Burr married to a black woman? Yes. Yep. Okay. Yeah. And um, so and she, I, I, he, and he's she becoming pretty much a dad. tells him what he can joke about now. He's an old dad. Uh -huh. uh, he, he's an old Irish dad. He's becoming the old Irish dad. He really is. He went, he doesn't. The funny bone isn't there as much with him anymore. He's becoming more of his like fa like I feel like his father or like he, he feels more like a rough father. Irish, a funny rough Irish guy now. He doesn't feel like the comedian he was. If that makes isn't any it strange sense. That, that that that's after he gets to. The I guess you could say he's the number one comedian in the world because who else right now is no, more? Well, Dave I mean, Ch I guess you could. Chappelle is still. Yeah, but Chappelle Chappelle isn't really like. I feel like Chappelle again is one of these guys that's um less comedy and more of just like. And can you believe the way that things are right now? I mean, they are just so strange, and it's less about comedy <laughs> and it's more about um politics or like uh, you know talking I, no, about because the world. here's what i'll say i here's the thing um bill burr's last two stand-ups have not been the greatest right like so the one the the stand-up before paper tiger whatever it was the one before paper tiger was not good in my opinion, I didn't really like it. I was like, wow, that's the first Bill Burr special I watched. I was like, uh. And then Dave, I think that was Paper Tiger. No, it's the, the well, the one before Paper, <laughs> the one before Paper Tiger, I didn't like. And then Dave Chappelle did, I think Dave Chappelle released about four or five specials all of a sudden in between those times. And, but Dave Chappelle had two that were fucking awesome. Dave Chappelle had two specials in the last five years that were really amazing. Three of them were like good, but they were like talks more like and funny little musings. But the two that he did one earlier and then one after, I forget which ones they were, but they, those two, dude, those were solid there. If, and I would say Bill Burr's, but then Bill Burr did paper tiger and Bill Burr's Paper Tiger. Well, no, Tiger. Paper Tiger's the one. Paper Paper Tiger's the one he did in 2019. Yes. And the new one that he did was where he had other comedians talk. Oh, but I and, didn't see that um, one, so I'm only talking about. Bomb. I don't know about that one. I didn't see it. I'm <laughs> I'm just only talking about Paper Tiger. The paper. No, I think Paper Tiger came out in, during the pandemic, didn't it? 2020. No, I think Paper Tiger came. I remember we were talking about Paper Tiger. 2019, when Kofi was. Still champion. I, I, I swear remember to God, it was during the pandemic reason. that. It, oh yeah, you're right. It's 2019. Fuck. But well, you okay. know. But you know what though. But no, that was um, his. But he went up against Dave Chappelle's. He was in between Dave Chappelle's two good 
stand-ups, and I think Dave Chappelle's two stand-ups beat Paper Tiger, even though Paper Tiger was close. Well, you know what's funny though? We're talking about like how comedians are. We're talking about how comedians are like becoming less funny and more of just like eh, whatever. Somebody on uh, Anthony's on Anthony Cumia's show said something that like made me laugh hysterically because it's so true. He's like, you know, I used to really like Louis Louis C.K. before he decided to turn into fucking Louis the Great, <laughs> Louis the Great, <laughs> and um, starts going on his fucking philosophy lessons about life. And it's just like, can we can we get to the comedy part? And then, and then he's like, yeah, you know what's funny? If you notice that Louis, after he's coming back from the whole, you know, jerking off thing and getting canceled thing, him he was he was getting these huge laughs and he was hilarious because he was actually being funny again. And now he's back to his fucking George Carlin sh uh, shtick where it's like, can we just, you know, politics and going in and out, you know, things that you can't say the things that you want to say anymore. What's going on with this country? It's just like, can we get back to, to the laughter or, yeah. or does everything have to be, well, be about, they, a, yeah, a big they fucked him up. Philosophical thing. They fucked him up, dude. He's thinking about all these things seriously now because of the experience he went through. That's the problem. Otherwise, he probably wouldn't be doing that. He probably would have only done comedy ever. But yeah, he because no, he, did, he used to do this a lot. He used to do this a lot too when he was the biggest, oh, one of the biggest comedians in the I world. I didn't know that. Okay, is that he stops being funny at some point and he just like they these comedians think that they actually have something poignant to say. And it's like you only do when you're funny. When you're not funny, you're just some fucking jackass well, in front of 50,000 yeah. people talking about <laughs> shit that everybody talks about on Reddit. Well, I think that's why Car mm -hmm. I think Carlin I think uh, Chappelle is good with his politics stuff because he usually makes a joke out of it. That's why I don't like Carlin. Like everybody's like, "Oh, Carlin's so great. Carlin's oh my hilarious." God. You don't like Everything Carlin? Carlin talks about is just miserable I, I have a miserable outlook on the world, and uh, you know we're all getting screwed by the government. The yeah, government wait, hates you. The government the hates me. The government wants to kill me. But he didn't start doing that until like the late yeah, the late eighties, the mid eighties, late eighties. Well, that's all. Well, that's that's the only fuck. Oh, so the, for the last thirty years of his career, he did that. Well, I'm just saying. Well, the last I, twenty. Well, see, that's the Carlin I prefer. I loved Carlin when he flipped because he used to be cutesy. He used to be like. I'm looking for a place for my stuff. I got some stuff here and some stuff there. I have some stuff everywhere. And he was all cutesy. I liked that, and I like all of Carlin. There's there's like there's actually four different Carlins. But I I really began to love him when he was like, fuck it all. You know, like that. I don't you know. know why. I like, you know who I like? I like um I like Jim Gaffigan. I like um, Oh God. I hate like, him. I like Brian Regan. I like. Uh, uh, I hate those both those guys. What the fuck, Luke? No, I really like those guys, <laughs> and I like. Um, what about Dennis Larry? You like lame white people. That's few, what you like. There's a few comedians that I that I used to like that I just don't like anymore. You know what? I I, 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 love. I, I prefer I prefer lame white guys to um, pretend miserable rich white guys who have yeah. it all in their life, but they pretend that they're that they hate everything. Oh, so you know, like just, Dennis Larry. Dennis yeah, Leary's it's like uh, I'm a multimillionaire. When I was listening, and of course Norm. Dennis Leary's "No Cure for Cancer" was legendary for me. I was ten years old or something when I heard that, and I was like, "Yo, this is amazing." But problem is, he ripped. Unfortunately, he ripped off Bill almost Hicks. all of it from Bill I Hicks. I got yeah. to see him live once. Oh God! You, you know, Dennis. Nope. The, the thing, the thing that Dennis Leary did is he stole Bill Hicks's routine, but he had this energy about it. And what's funny is Bill Hicks delivered a dark sophisticated you know version of this outlook in these musings but then Dennis Leary took it and he did like the cracked crackhead version of it and for some reason he didn't he steal that asshole song completely yeah. you're an yeah, asshole he's... you're an asshole he stole all he's dude he stole all his stuff like specific jokes and stuff and things he said it was like it was all Bill Hicks's like thing. Bill Hicks was like, "I'm just gonna smoke, 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 and I don't give a fuck if I die." And he and he go into all these things. And then Dennis Leary would just did the same thing on on his, Norm Norm. Bill Hicks I feel like Norm so McDonald. Norm McDonald had a good blend of both, where he could bring up something serious that make you think, but then he'd be funny immediately. He'd be like, "Okay, yeah, that." He's he's like doing his job. He's making you think, but most importantly, he's getting you to laugh. 
A lot yeah. of comedians forget that now, and they want you to think more about the point that they made instead of being like, "Oh, that was funny." Like, I don't. You know what's funny? Norm said something that really made me laugh about um. He, it was about uh, what was it called? like? How some parents say that they're proud of their gay son. Like a, a, a parents were wearing this shirt that said like, "Oh, I'm proud of my gay son," and he's like, "That's a weird thing to be proud about." Like, imagine you're like showing your friends at work like pictures of your kids. Like, oh yeah, he's a star varsity player. You know, he he's great at basketball. Oh. And he also loves sucking cock. Here's a few pictures of it. Yeah, he just <laughs> loves it. He loves any s- shape, size, color. He just loves getting it in his best, mouth. <laughs> he's one of the best butt pumpers you've ever seen. How many people here can say that their son's a best butt pumper you've ever seen? Yeah. Um, the funniest. The funniest is when he's when he's um got sponsors on his podcast, like the man great and um. He just shits on the man great the whole time. Well, he don't got him like, anymore, what? Luke. He doesn't well, have him anymore. The, you think the man great is flimsy? And then he has the um, Dollar <laughs> Shave Club, and he's like, the, these sh- these razors, they're going to send high-quality razors to your house every month. And he's like, <laughs> oh, and uh, these razors are sh- so sharp they can, they can cut your wife's throat in half. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, you know what else is funny, too? Uh Dennis Leary never really did another. I know he did Locked and Loaded or something, but I mean, he really never did another special after the one he stole from Bill Hicks. <laughs> like once, because Bill mean, Hicks died. You know, Bill Hicks died, and then Dennis have... Leary never did a special. Yeah. I mean, Bill you only really see you know, all my material. Leary at the uh, Boston Comedy Come Home thing that they do the charity thing. Yes. Yeah, so no. Listen, I love Dennis Leary as an entertainer. Like I'm serious. I love. First of all, I do love Cure for Cancer. Still, he did take some material and mix it, and then he made it his own in a way. But he did rip it off. But it's still great how he does it, and I love No Cure for Cancer. And dude, I love Rescue Me. That show is fucking great, and I love that show. And Dennis Leary's great, and he's a local guy. He's a Worcester guy. Dennis Leary, he's cousins with Conan. We love Conan. So I love Dennis Leary. He's an OG and I really do love him. But I mean, let's face there's it. There's just some comedians. There's some comedians that are funnier on the radio and funnier on podcasts than they are stand up, you know? Yeah. Like um, like Jim Norton. I love him on the radio. I think he's hilarious. But dude, his stand up's just not for me. The only time I've laughed at his stand up was like he did like a quick five minute thing for Jay Leno one time. And he, he was legitimately funny, but you listen to anything else that he does. And he's so cornballish with his delivery. Like, Oh, and you know, the trans, you know, the transvestite prostitute goes and says, Hey, I need more money. Like, ugh, like just stop being so show tuny with it. Johnny, here's you, know, a- you know, who does that? Who's you know, that? who does that? Um, John Mulaney. That guy does that all the time with his stupid 1920s fucking cartoon character voice shtick. I fucking mm. hate it. Here's uh here's a little bit here's a little bit of Hicks and Larry. Thank you guys. Watch this. a little bit of Larry and uh, Hicks. No, shut up, Alexa. How many smokers do we have here tonight? Smokers. 91. That's a lot of energy for you fuckers. That's good. Usually you get <coughs> Thank you guys, thank you. Next time I need you, just hawk up a chunk of lung for me, all right? He's almost dead Bear here back, too, by the way. A flim gem towards the stage. <coughs> but listen to this. How many non-smokers do we have here tonight? Bunch of whining little maggots. Whining fucking maggots. Oh my god. There is good news for smokers, I'm sure. So this is twenty five minutes long. We all have noticed Surgeon General's warnings are different on the sides of each pack. That's pretty cool. Mine say, Surgeon General's warning, cigarette smoking may cause fetal injury or premature birth. Hey, fuck it. Pick it! Yeah! He wants the whole front of the pack to be the warning. Like, the problem is, we just haven't noticed yet, right? Like, he's gonna get his way, and all of a sudden, smokers around the world are gonna be going, Yeah, Bill, I've got some cigarettes. Holy shit! These things are bad for you! Shit, I thought they were good for you. I thought they had vitamin C in them and stuff. 
See, Leary has this ranting energy delivery, and Hicks had that slow... De- it reminds me of, like, the founder, the McDonald's movie. They did the thing. You know what I mean? Like, r- the guy was like... He basically just stole McDonald's in a way, or he, he sort of enhanced it and took it to be his own. You know what I mean? That sort of thing. Didn't he it's, buy it? He technically did buy no, it. No, he owned the land that they were built on. Yeah, he he, he created a li- he created a realty a land grab realty company really and because of that ended up being able to buy it but yeah no i love that movie um because it's what you got to do listen as a person who's been in sales forever you always dream of being able to sell your product like massively that's what he thought he thought he was going to sell these milkshake machines that's why he wanted mcdonald's to create a million mcdonald's so he could sell a zillion milkshake machines and you get rich from the sales on that and then at some point it went, <laughs> boom oh shit wait i'm gonna own mcdonald's he didn't even think about and that. at some oh, point man, the milkshake hit milk machine that- hit, hit machine don't work yeah that's what i was gonna say well actually you know what no, they worked the milkshake and ice cream machines at my mcdonald's have never been broken like they've always worked uh, so that must be like a, huh. no, and actually in fact that's God. been the case with every mcdonald's i've ever been in in yeah. jersey oh, yeah. really? not one problem Hey, uh, hey, how many people here in the audience? Let me do a stand-up joke. Hey, how many people here in the audience? Uh, you know, uh, you go into you go into your local McDonald's and uh, the milkshake machine's broken. How many people? Uh, me. Yeah, me, yeah, me. yeah. My McDonald's is my McDonald's only hires black people too. Um, no. Oh, and then the guy gets shot on stage and killed. For- it's not funny. <laughs> Me and my fat whale friends are leaving. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. As the herd, as, you as know, the herd of the hippopotamuses. Works. I guarantee the machine fucking works. The workers don't want to make the fucking milkshake. No, what it is normally is the, is the honestly what it is is uh, besides tell, people telling racist jokes, which don't exist really because all jokes are just whatever, but... It's it's the, they don't want to clean them. Nobody wants to clean the milkshake machine. That's the problem. It's not the make. It's because at some point you got to clean it or whatever. And it's like, fuck it. We don't have milkshakes. All right, we have white people. Yeah, so it just does do a good thing about Dunkin' Donuts and coffee though. That was a good. We have a bunch spiel. of crackers. Yeah, what's your I Dunkin', like Dunkin Donuts like? I like I like Dunkin' Donuts. It's all right. Yeah. About I like how mine. you can get a cup of black coffee. Everything's got maple Co- nut flavoring. Coffee is pretty trash because, like, it, it feels like they barely mix any of the cream that they put in there, like cream or sugar. It's just like they dump it in there, and it's all at the bottom. So once you get near the end of your cup, you're just having nothing but pure sugar. Um, but it's better than Starbucks. Starbucks is, like, just watery coffee that tastes like garbage. Hey, Joe, and let me ask you a for question. For 15 so bucks, run- too. I've run into this problem at the Dunkin' Donuts as I go to. Have you noticed how they're all like Mexican and don't speak English? Um, you know, I gotta be yeah, honest. In my my local ones, it's where I used to live and here, it's mostly white people that work there. For me, I don't know. You know, I don't know. For me, it's Indians. Really, the gas station is, but yeah. not the. Oh, that's weird. No, it's a lot of a lot of franchises. A lot of Dunkin' Donuts franchises are owned by Indians in in Jersey. <laughs> hey, hey, Luke, the, the Starbucks I go to, it, it, they're pretty good. Yeah, I mean, I've had good shit from Starbucks, but it's like everything there is super expensive, you know. And yeah, the regular yeah, coffee, yeah. the regular coffee is just not that good. Bucks. Fuck, I the hate water Starbucks. is like five. Do- like, if you want a bottle of water, it's five dollars. Their cheese, their sandwiches are. Like their menu's super limited and everything there is expensive. But I'll, I'll give you this. Job, though, was like six dollars. Yeah, they got good. They got like good shakes and they've got um, like pretty good scones. Like I really like their blueberry scones. But yeah, like nothing that I would want to go actively go out to because it's just so fucking pricey. Mm. And you know you can get. Their their sausage egg and cheese sandwiches suck compared to uh, Dunkin' Donuts. Like Dunkin' don't, Donuts I don't has support them. I don't want to support the West Coast. Pretty good. Yeah, Dunkin' Donuts, you can spend ten bucks, get a sausage egg and cheese sandwich, a large hey, egg coffee, and a side of hash browns. I like their culotta the drink. You're lucky you can get a drink. Jesse looks like he's shooting an Our Lady Peace music video or something. 
<laughs> oh, dude, I'm. Just, it's actually funny because what I'm doing is just you know life. Maybe you should <laughs> like. <laughs> I don't know, living man. the so life, painful. man. Just like maybe I should just kill myself. I don't know. Pain. Jesse, I Take love you. Pain. Drink yep, that yep, water. Yep. Yeah, drink Jesse that water. Jesse praying. Yeah, drink that water like it's a cock. Jesse praying. <laughs> yeah, you better pray. Pray like what would I pray to, man? Like Not fucking, it sounds like anybody's listening to my fucking broken hips. <laughs> oh come on, you have a broken brain. <laughs> Here's how you do Jesse's impression. Just be the most, like, miserable, negative person, but also have, like, this fake sense of, like, I'm also happy. He, <laughs> Yeah, he looks happy to me right wow. now. I mean, he's never really happy. <laughs> yeah, what? Well, then I'd be happy about it, man. It's just, uh, you know, it's just, like, struggling. He's alive, know? man. Be happy that, you know, he's with, uh, with us. I mean, we're amazing, you know? Damn right. Yeah, man. See? Hey, I love Joe, Jesse. Let me, ask you, let me ask you a question. You just did. Um, <laughs> let me ask you something. Why don't you well, ask, why don't you ask me? Brown people are bad to have at the fucking... What, what fucking restaurant do you... Dunkin' Donuts. Why is that a problem? <laughs> you know, because he said, like... Yeah, I don't trust anybody who's the same... Oh, it was because they couldn't speak English. Okay. I, all right, I didn't catch that. I don't trust but, anybody who... Okay. <laughs> uh, I just wanted to ask because he opened it with, you know, what's a big problem at my Dunkin' Donuts? Brown people. <laughs> big. Yeah. I love. Like there's do. a sign. Like there's a sign and like an X mark over them when you go to every McDonald's. Dude, yeah, honey. Yeah. Hun like Honeydew is great, dude, because when you haven't had Honeydew in a while and you've been having Dunkin' Donuts for a while and you have Honeydew, I don't know why, but Honeydew tastes like crack to me at this point. Honeydew. Is that because you're so used to the fucking like, sweetness of everything? No, I think it's because but Honeydew is really sweet. And like, so after Dunkin' Donuts, you're like, yup, and you're just used to it. You know what I mean? It's like... Where if you drink Pepsi every day and then you have a Coke, you're like, whoa, like this, you know, I don't know. It's weird. I'm telling you, dude, I had some honeydew sandwiches the other, uh, it was a year ago, actually. Uh, about a year ago, I had honeydew sandwiches and a, and a coffee and everything, and everything just tasted amazing. I was like, what the fuck is this? And it's because I think I was just, I'm just so used to Dunkin' Donuts. You're talking about the place you go to. No, I'm not, no, it's the place yeah. you go to. I don't know what honeydew no, is. No, I'm talking, I'm talking about you. Talk, you were talking about What's honeydew. The, I was thinking honeydew. It's like looked it up, saying, "Oh, honeydew donuts." Yeah, it's a donut place. It's like uh, I don't know I, where oh. is honey. Is honeydew not on the west coast? Probably not. I am so fucking. I don't. Man, I, I don't honeydew. have a honeydew. Now I get it. I don't even have I a have fucking Krispy Kreme nearby. To, it's like an oh, EA. dude, where I'm a fucking retard, dude. Honeydew is only a New England thing. Like there's no, yeah, dude, well, yeah. you guys <laughs> don't know what the fuck. That's honeydew in Massachusetts. Is, <laughs> I'm like honeydew fan with with a coffee. What are you fucking talking? About? I'm over just trying to. Figure Wait, it well, out. you guys don't have a fucking place called the Packy, dude. You know what's <laughs> you know what's really fucked up is not only not only is honeydew not it's not it's. <laughs> It's not even a fucking New England thing. It's only really a Massachusetts thing. It's not even. <laughs> you guys don't know what I'm talking about, dude. It's look at the. you look further. It's really only. It's, on it's literally all. The same time. <laughs> look at it. It's literally like. But you know what? Wow. All the honeydews. You know what's fucked up about honeydew? It, there wasn't even one when I lived in Quincy. There's not a honeydew like near it. Like. <laughs> In fact, <laughs> dude, now the honeydews are like surrounding me. Like I'm like in the middle of these honeydews. <laughs> like it's like you know what's really good. Smiley that's quite a is, sentence. Like nobody. Honeydews are surrounding. Oh, wow. <laughs> that's funny. Oh. Yes, wow, well, look at that. Wow, there's like five honeydews honey near me. I'm like I I should just go. Honeydews. Honeydews sounds like a slur for some for like you know a mixed person. Yeah. Like a raped white woman. Get your fucking honeydew ass out of my yard. I just looked up one of the local honeydews, and uh, this is apparently this is what goes on at honeydew. Like the young women workers hug like like men with like really bad fucking what do you call it in the stomach area? Fubar. Every 
Lots no, of things. Like a he's got like a Oopa? No. What do you what's, Beer belly? what happens to your a, like a hernia? A, a hernia. Yeah, you, you, old, old balding men with hernias like apparently get hugs when they go in the That's what my That's what my dad had before he died. He had um like before he was diagnosed, he's just like there's this huge thing sticking out of my stomach and he's like I don't know what it is. And then he finally got it checked out after like a month or two of it being there. And they're like, yeah, that's, um, it's not good. <laughs> is it, was it related or then, was it just separate? Yeah. Well, it, he had that along with, um, you know, uh, what's it called of the liver C- cirrhosis of the liver. So okay. he just had this big thing sticking out of his stomach and he called it Quato. He called it Quato. <laughs> yeah, from fucking Total Recall. Quato. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, dude, they, that's crazy. Dude, it really was grotesque, though. No, yeah, like no, those was... it, those look bizarre. I've seen people without their shirt on. It looks like they're giving birth to a football. Yeah, Weird. and he would have to get it drained all the time, and then eventually they would have to start draining shit uh, from his from his penis too. Were they ew, were they gonna <laughs> like take it out? Were they not gonna operate on it? I don't know what they were gonna do. I feel like they probably realized it was too late, and oh, they just didn't have the heart to tell us. And they're like, "Oh, we're gonna keep trying." You know, well, I mean, drain his penis just, anyway. well, dude, if you're if and you're then going, he just died. if you're going downhill with cirrhosis, I mean, and you have a hernia, they're not gonna be like, "Hey, let's operate on you on a horrific hernia surgery." Like, so you can live the last month or two, like, you know, in pain, recovering from hernia surgery. Yeah, like, unless they were going in already and it was, like, something they could do on the way or whatever. That's the only time I've seen that done. Things yeah. Like that. I really feel, dude, it's like, dude, you know what? I just, I'm annoyed that those last few months that I wasn't really, like, around with him that much. He was kind of, like, in the hospital a lot, and we had this you know like three or four months before he died like we had this huge huge like argument with each other where we were up like all night fighting with each other because he just was he did not like ever want to listen and he was kind of he was kind of being a dick like a, a really big dickhead to me and my mom but you know just like when you're there your mind is basically like all over the place and he started lighting these fucking like wax candles all over the place and they got everywhere and then he would spend like two and a half three hours trying to undo his belt buckle thing and it was just like really sad and i i think the day before the that we fought for like six hours um just earlier we had smoked weed for the first time together and it was like and i was like man i i think i can do it yeah I i should be doing this with my dad a lot you know and then that whole thing happened, and you know, I said things that I had held in my whole life, you know, that I regret saying now. And he said that I was gonna regret saying them. I was like, you know what? Shut the fuck up, dude. And uh, yeah, that's okay. You got one last. But one. then you I got asked, la- I asked him, I asked him, like I was trying to apologize to him on the phone. I was like, hey, dad, you know, I'm really sorry. And he's like, it's okay, son, you know, whatever. I'm like, no, I, I shouldn't have said that to you. And then he was like, oh, dude, I, I promise it's okay. Now I got to go. I have to eat my lunch. <laughs> like, he was more concerned with eating lunch <laughs> than he was uh, hearing my apology. <laughs> it means a lot to go on good terms with each other. That's one. funny. Well, hey, I mean, you know, my dad, because my dad had diabetes and it was always, like, kind of sick, he was Diabetes. he was bedridden a bit, quite a bit for the last couple of years, right? I mean, he was sort of like tired and whatever was going on. So he was always ups- kind of like, not upset, but like kind of down because, dude, I wanted to go play and do whatever I wanted to do all over the house or other places. And I would do stuff with my mom and stuff. And he would always be like, can you hey, bring him in here or whatever? And I would never, I'd be like playing video, doing something or playing toys. And so I felt bad about that because my mother told me later, she's like, yeah, he always wanted to do more with you, but what you were always just running around. And I was like, oh, I feel horrible now. What the fuck? But um, so he couldn't do stuff. He couldn't even come up, like throw a football or something, really. But uh, so, yeah, I sort of kind of get that. But I was eight. So, I mean, it's a whole different thing. But yeah, yeah. I was like I was literally 10 years, no, 11 years older than you. Yeah. When um. 
when that shit happens. So, yeah, it's just, but yeah, um, and it's fucking crazy. My dad was like only fifty one. Like, it's my, fucking just that's crazy. Yeah, my, my I mean, my dad was forty eight. All right, well, you know, it's not a it's yeah. not a competition. Yeah, but well, I'd say we're we're equal. <laughs> yeah. Well, my dad made more money. How about that? My dad made more money well, than your dad. Fuck you. My dad's you know fifty-one what? as well. You, your dad probably did make more than my dad. <laughs> my dad was he was smart. Like he was a really smart um with like yeah. sciencey shit. Like he was um he used to own his own AC company, AC repair company, but it ended up um going bankrupt. Uh, but he, when he took a test mm. years and years and years ago, he was like, he scored like top six in the whole country. So I was damn. like, damn, really? He's like, yeah. And he, and he, I, I asked my other uncle who owns a, um, a, uh, AC repair company also. And he's like, yeah, dude, I, your dad was fucking, was just like a genius and shit. And I was like, well, well, how come those, those traits couldn't be passed down to me because the only thing that i'm smart with is talking about fucking professional wrestling <laughs> well, i don't know man you be you, you talking about cock is pretty good you're a funny guy like i mean you're speaking really funny of, like. uh, speaking of professional wrestling i had a the question i had was what the point of pre-ordering the aew game is you're not getting anything with it I don't understand the point. Um, I never get the point of any of these pre-orders, but I will say thank you, uh, Sith Negan pre-ordered it for me. So it's coming. The only oh, game I'll ever pre-order the only pianos. the only g- game I'll ever pre-order is GTA Six. Like, yes. The, 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 what if they no tone it down? To pre-order what if they any tone fucking it? announce that shit already. <laughs> what if they tone it down though, and they don't like you can't kick women anymore or stuff like that? They're not going to do that. You can still kick women. I heard rumors that GTA 6 is going to feature having sex with strippers. Ooh. I I think a lot of people have these, um, again, it's like the overreactions. Like, oh, my God, there's going to be a woman character? They hate that. That's it. Woke GTA. It's about these are the same. It's overdue for a woman, isn't there? Like, it's been. Yeah, it's really overdue. Like, I don't. I really don't give a shit about that. Like people who are getting annoyed about that and think that's a telltale sign of SJW GTA. Well, because there has that stuff is going are, on everywhere, Luke. It's going on. You're everywhere. a fucking loser. It's because it's going on everywhere. GTA. They're doing that everywhere. I care about everything. enjoying so. the fucking game. Yeah. The only, I I don't know. I I'm more. Yeah. I think GTA has, for the longest time, kept up its satire of making fun of both the left and the right. So I don't think anything really is going to change there. And if it does, I mean, it will suck. But the game is still probably going to be amazing. I'm I'm not I'm playing I'm playing the game to go drive around in a giant, you know, sandbox. You know what? I just got an email from Rumble about my Rumble page and the email advertising my content is cracking me the fuck up on Rumble. It's like Rumble updates for Joe Cronin. (laughs) Hooker won't have sex with fat guy due to poop ass. <laughs> I saw that. <laughs> and then, and then Senator from Nebraska has insane meltdown over trans people. I mean, these look like tabloid fucking news posts in the email. I don't know why. Indiana Jones divorce. So what is Rumble? Is it like? <laughs> is it like the new hot thing on on the market? Is it like couch? I went I went live from Rumble the other day, and we actually got 118 people watching and over 100 f- followers on Rumble. So I don't know. We did pretty good on Rumble the other day. I guess Daily Motion isn't isn't blowing up. <laughs> no, I guess that didn't work out. I mean, this is just you know this reminds me of Vimeo when or whatever the, not Vimeo, uh, VidMe when Vid.me was something for a second. I watched a lot of porn on Daily Motion. Oh. It was like oh. soft core porn, like like girls like wrestling with each other. Well, good news, I've made thirty cents on Rumble so far. Oh. Uh-huh. You know what's weird though? The other day people donated a bunch. And um they like they like a couple of people dropped a dollar, two dollars, three dollars, four dollars, five dollars. It all equaled about eight bucks. But when I look at my cash out amount, it says thirty cents. It's like where is that boarding is that boarding Google? No, I don't think so. I don't. This doesn't look. I don't know. I can't. 
figure it out, but it doesn't. But the point is, people, where's the $8 that people donated? That's not even showing up. It says I earned 30 cents. Where's the money that people donated? So I'm confused. It's okay. It says I've earned four bucks. I don't know. It's just not anyway. It's not for that. It's just a backup and to make sure that I'm on there in case it you know it does better and whatever else. I mean, is that what a uh, what's his name Stephen Crowder does? He has Rumble as like a backup for the yeah. day YouTube. Uh, it works off. better Stephen for Crowder. people like him though because he's got hundreds of thousands of followers, so it's easy to be like go over there and it's okay. You know where for me and did that you guy. see that leaked footage of him it's oh yeah you did we played it, it was yeah. the douchiest thing so yeah, douchey weird, huh? i finally got to fin to wash it and yeah. oh my god man just came off like such a fucking prick just another you know but uh um... yeah, just another right wing guy who who says they care about like true equality and they're like oh i want everybody to have a freedom of speech and this and that but what but like when it comes to marriage when it comes to relationships they live in the fucking bygone era they live in a fucking in the in ancient rome or some shit like oh the, mm -hmm. the woman should be doing wifely things and cooking and shopping even though they're fucking seven months pregnant it's an it's a problem with people that are too alpha they they do they control they do a lot of controlling you know what i mean like it's a controlling alpha no it's a problem with people it's a problem with legitimately sexist people like that i don't like saying that term but if that's your view of marriage you are a legitimately sexist person and those are the people that deserve those terms thrown at them instead of people who are like, oh, I, don't, I didn't really like the Ghostbusters remake. Sexist. <laughs> like, that's not the people who deserves it. Well, you, I, know, you know who deserves it? I, the guy who's asking his his late late stage pregnant wife to go shopping for him because he's boxed in because he hasn't been to the gym all day. Like, what the fuck is your is these fucking conservatives problem you know it reminded me of She's someone living. who was like trying to get rid of their wife so because some hooker was coming over that's what it kind of reminded like i don't know like i told listen me and, or, Leah, me and Leah have had worse fights way worse than that you know what i mean so if you no, you've had worse have you you've probably had worse fights but you've ever had a fight where it's like over you being such an like i don't know dude egotistical, like statistical like sexist person you sexist. that you my Leah. Leah's pretty mean when she gets upset and she fights. So if you recorded some, I of this think stuff, we're all mean when we get upset. Like I've had arguments that are nastier than that, yeah. but I feel like the reasonings for those arguments aren't nearly as shitty and as um. Yeah, like I would never just, like, have said like she is I, I'm not gonna. It's she's pregnant and whatever. I'm like I'm okay. I'll take care of it or whatever. You know what I mean? Like I'm not gonna. I don't know. Yeah, I, I'm. I'm like I'm gonna take care of her. The yeah. worst is seeing Republicans who defend that. They're like, well, she's not fulfilled. We don't know the full context, but she might not be fulfilling her wifely agreement. And it's just like, ugh, like, do you guys, is this what you guys fucking think marriage is supposed to be? Wouldn't like be, a big servitude of one side? I would have loved it if she started blowing him and they they ended up having makeup sex and that was on the yes. camera. Yeah, Steven Crowder blowing. That. Listen, we I would have blocked his face out, but... We got to get out of here. We got to get, right, get out of here. All right, everybody. It's Time's been a up. great show. Great yeah. fucking show. Great, Jesse. great show. Great people. Yeah, come on. It's been great. Come on, baby. I fell, I, I fucking fell asleep over here on the corner. Oh, uh, Mike? Are you turning a dust? Mike Tyson, I just want to fuck you in the ass. <laughs> what was that gay Trump? Here we come! It's for you done! Hey, <laughs> I want you to bite Xander's holy feel other ear off. I want you to bite into my dick. What did you even say there? Oh, your lips can off. somebody get Google Translate for that? I'm going to the boss of the Lizzo's job with you, Rob. You sound like Rastafa underwater earlier. Jenny Moore. Jenny Moore. Dan Just kidding, Kennedy I love you, Dan Kennedy. Dan Kennedy is the worst like person. Mm -hmm. Dan Kennedy, great man, very stupid though. <laughs> Love him to death. <laughs> very stupid. Very oh my god. Fuck you up with a broomstick. All right, everybody. <laughs> we'll see you guys. All right, yeah. love you guys. See you guys. See if. Uh, love you, Joe. Love, love you, Joe. Kisses.
kisses. Later, Great yeah. stuff, Rojas. Kisses. Mwah, mwah. Everybody else, Stan Kennedy, John Wills, mm-hmm. Mr. Pico, and Jesse J. Rostafa earlier. Uh, I think Rostafa is sexy, yes. I think Luke Rojas wins the uh, championship tonight, man. He fucking crushed it tonight. Uh, he was hilarious. There are so many funny parts tonight from Luke. Um, Ghost from the Coast, top donation. Thank you, Ghost, and everybody else who donated all night long, guys. Thank you so much. D. Welsh, Alex Oley, Broken Lion, Allison Tuckwab, the Ghost from the Coast, Mr. Pico Boulevard, Todd Pelkey, Todd Pelkey dropping him earlier, Blair Lyason, Louis Erdinetta, and Ghost from the Coast, Todd Pelkey, John Wills. That's about everybody, I think. I had fun. I hope you did too. We'll see you Friday night.